experience. Get ready. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's get hype. Chit chit. What's going on, Cowboys Nation? <clears throat> Welcome to another episode of the Late Night Hype. Big Game James, Law Nation, Skywalker Steel. Two guests in the building. Boss mm-hmm. Cowboy and former Dallas Cowboy cornerback Tyler Patman. Are y'all ready? Let's go. What's up, young Lion Hearted. I love that name, uh, dog. Yeah, man, I really, dope. really do. <laughs> Lion Hearted. Before we go anywhere, where, where'd that come from? Uh, man, honestly, I'll tell you the truth. So, uh, in college, um, I forgot what album it was. It might have been the warm up, but y'all know who Jay Cole is, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and he had this line. It was like, little blank, right? But mm. I'm Lion Hearted. Yeah. And that, boy, that just stuck with me. Yeah. You know, because I always had like that. You know, I'm not that I'm not that big of a guy, you know, but uh, I just felt like I was, you know, a lion. Like, ain't nobody going to stop me. You can tell me what you want. I'm going to keep going. It don't matter. So that kind of just, man, it stuck with me for, for for the long run. For all the fellow little people out there, I feel all right. Yeah, I feel yeah, like yeah. That. Slim fit. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. Go, Tyler. <laughs> Slim fit. <laughs> What's up, Law Nation, Boss Cowboy, Big Game James? How you doing? Oh man, just 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 hanging in here so easy. Now I, I did want to piggyback a quick question on your background because you know Tyler, we know you, but we also follow the Cowboys very uh-huh. heavily. You have new fans. I wanted to kind of people might not know, but you had a very humbling road to even make the roster. I want you to give, give your background a little bit of just you know making the team with America's team. Oh man, it goes. You know, it goes way back before that, but keep it short, man. Um, came out of the uh, Oklahoma State my last year, uh, transfer guy over there, and uh, went undrafted. Um, crazy thing is, man, after after the draft, um, I got a call from the Cowboys, um, and they were like, man, we thinking about bringing you in on an undrafted free agent contract. Um, got a call from the Dolphins. They were saying, hey, yeah, we, we can't get you a contract, but we'll bring you in on a tryout. And, um, you know, my agent was kind of talking to them. He called back with the Cowboys, like, hey, let's just, you know, take it and run with it. Um, they were like, man, we just filled a position with somebody else. And so, um, but they were like, man, we feel free to just to come in on a tryout, you know? And so, man, we lined up two two tryouts, back-to-back weeks. I went to Dallas on a three-day tryout. Man, it was the toughest three days in my <laughs> career. I'm talking about, it was probably six of us uh on the last day it was just me and uh i'm not you probably guys know who terrence mitchell is yes uh, yeah. we were the last two i mean and we took all the reps on sunday um mm. and man the next day i was full body sore i've never <laughs> been that sore in my life and uh mm. you know i just killed it you know and um so two days later they called me back said they wanted to bring me in um and you know after that man it's just the undrafted grind and you know i had to make a shake in, in preseason so crazy it was, yeah, because people it was don't. A, a lot of people don't know, but you had the most interceptions out of everybody in preseason that year. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I was trying to get it, man. I was trying to make. I mean, trying to it. get is an yeah. understatement. Right. You know that yeah. that that's kind of like Donovan Wilson, like, and you know we mm-hmm. say here a lot: if you win the crowd, you win your freedom. Right. You know, and that's when the crowd co-signed you. You yeah. know, and you put it out there. You put on the show. So, yeah. yeah, man, it was it was a grind. Like I said, man, luckily I had a great coach, uh, Jerome Henderson. He really like spoke life into me. I remember. Um, man, he just, you know, he kind of made sure that he knew, you know, to make sure he fed into me mentally what type of player I was. Um, and man, when I had that behind me, bro, I just I just kept going. And um, like you said, uh, you know, being an undrafted guy, the fans going to love you. If yeah. you're balling, right. Yeah. They want to know who you are. They want to know what's going on. And when I made those plays, man, they just. They backed me for sure. Yeah, yeah, and they looked at it. Well, like the Cowboys organization even cut, I believe, B. W. Webb for yeah. you to get onto that roster there. <laughs> so that was deep uh, yeah. for you, for you to make it undrafted, right? To to overcome a guy that was drafted in the fourth round. So that shows a lot of things about this 
upcoming season for the 2021 mm -hmm. is that these young DBs or people that's out here from last year mm -hmm. continue to fight. Oh, that's yeah. why I tell everybody, man, everybody got a puncher's chance, but you got to continue to fight and grind. And you sure. did that. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Okay, well, um, is, is we doing all the great congratulations? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah we gonna start the okay, That's I'm, how I'm, we you set you up. Yeah. Okay, I'm done with that. Big game games comes off the top turn book. Okay, you know I don't do that stuff, y'all. We do that nice stuff. I, you feel me? You know what I'm saying, Tyler? You, you was a dog over there, 2014. I was excited when you came on the team. You know what I'm saying? You came in scrappy. Everybody yeah. was hitting me up. I'm gonna just keep it real, Tyler. Everybody was hitting me up like, "Oh, you got Tyler Patman on there? Then you need to ask him about that dance. You need to ask him about this. Like, I don't, I don't care. You better ask me about this. So you know, if you don't want to talk about Oh, that's fine, but we need to nah. ask you and Dez. I mean, right. yeah, I'm man. So let me tell you this real first, real quick. <laughs> Whenever I'm dealing with kids, like I told you, I, I, I work with a lot of kids. Right. Yeah. That's the first thing they talk about. <laughs> Every time they want to know. Google okay, you. <laughs> See yeah, that's, yeah. You know, that's going to be the first video because Dez, yep. you know, we got a big name, so yep. that's the first video I'm connected with. Uh, but uh man you know it was just one of those training camp days you know mm -hmm. i was in mm -hmm. my bag i was strapping right one-on-ones team seven on seven so we get to the last it's like a two-minute drill mm -hmm. um and so we going he happens to be on my side two times in a row you know the first time he's you know there's just he likes to talk that's the type of person he is he's fiery you know and i'm the same way so i wasn't gonna back down and um <laughs> we got into it man and you know it just escalated one of those hot training camp days and you know but that's my brother man he's a very humble dude man a great guy and um you know after practice we squashed it man it wasn't nothing but a little yeah. a little yeah, brother I, mean, I think he loves that he invites yeah, that. He, yeah who didn't get in the fight with see, this, bro. see he's too nice you 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 too <laughs> humble man listen <laughs> Go say how it is, cause I play corn. I know how it is. Yeah, when they, I mean, when I'm asking, I want you, the you was yeah. winning. That's what I'm saying. I was winning. I was I was winning the reps. Yeah, mm -hmm. cause that's how it go. I know how it go, man. Right. I, I'm telling you, when you winning those reps, the receivers want to fight. Oh, you oh, they know. so calm when they winning. Oh, yeah. they're just throwing the ball at you, like, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Were like, you there? Yeah. But he was one of them dudes that was going to be fiery regardless. regardless if he right, was yeah. losing reps, if he was winning, yeah. Reps, yeah, he, he, just, he just on attack. Were you yeah, there yeah. when he went, you can't guard me, you can't guard me, you can't nah, guard me. Yeah, no, 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 I wasn't there. Okay. He, I, I, he, I, you he, probably would have said something. Yeah, he had to say, yeah, had to say <laughs> that. Been like, you been like, you ain't talking about me, yeah, though. Yeah, you speaking that corner talk. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, it wasn't talking about them, but you ain't talking about me. talking about me. That's that corner talk. That's what I'm right. You were sticky. You were a very sticky cornerback when you were here. I think you might have been, I mean, since you left, I don't know if we had a cornerback as fast as you. What was your 40 time? Uh, I was a high four four guy, four yeah. four nine. Yeah, you played. Yeah. I thought you played faster than that. I thought mm -hmm. you might have said four. Yeah, you three, definitely. So. I bet your shoulder was good because your. Oh yeah, my quickness is that's what. Yeah. That's what I was blessed. Your with. change of direction was good. Mm -hmm. Yes, yep. sir. I think the timing is also perfect. We spoke about this before we actually went live. Uh, and we just had a promotion, Harold Nash, to the strength and conditioning coordinator. And one of the things that, you know, I was looking in your background and one of the interviews came up about Ronnie Braxton, mm -hmm. real truth, yeah. who is also your trainer. So, you know, Lizzie Cash with DallasCowboys.com. And they talked about that the prep of working with him with your work ethic was a lot that had to do with your success. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about that a little bit? Because I want to ask you a couple of more follow-up questions on that. For sure. Um... Man, first of all, let me let me start by saying that just how we were talking about Dez and how he's that type of guy, he's fiery, I'm fiery, Ronnie's the same way, right? And there's not a lot of trainers out there that's like that. Yeah. Um, there's not a lot of trainers out there that's going to push you when you need when you truly need to be pushed. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, you get into the league, you get into the NFL, and uh, you, you get that ego, right? And so trainers kind of, they going to they gonna coach you, but they not going to – they trying to make that money still, you know what right. I mean? But yeah. real's not like that. He going to keep it 100 with you. He going to talk to you, right, in a way that you don't want to be talked to in, right? And he's going to challenge you in a sense of, um, I know you guys probably heard it, but it's, it's, a, it's a thing they say in strength and conditioning that if you continue to do the same workout over and over and over again, you kind of hit a ceiling. 
like yeah. his body kind of gets used to it yeah. um this yeah. dude is so special and coming up with different exercises lifts um football drills that are so different that you like bro like how you even come up with this but at the same time it still correlates to the field um and that's what was special about him man he's just always bringing something new to you um to help you continue to grow as a player yeah um because this this is something that i honestly feel from the bottom of my heart i feel like strength and conditioning coaches are sometimes most of the undervalued people in the whole building oh yeah like like and, and people don't know why marcus when he passed it was so many players mm. that was hurt because they also spend the most intimate time with you like most yeah. until you kind of get into organizations and organized football like at least college up you don't yeah. see that so like i want to ask you just be jerry jones mm. introduce what would you and just be creative if you want to be you have no cap on this what would you pay for somebody like a real truth? Mm. Ask Jerry Jones. You Jerry. And I'm hiring a strength coach. Yes. Um man, I'm thinking seven figures. Um, it's that important, like you said. Um, and sometimes I think they're undervalued. It's seven a, figures. Seven. Yes. Right, because now you're talking about um, protecting my investment during a 16-week season. You know what I mean? So, yeah. you know, that's that's everything. Right. You know what I mean? If, if I want, like, if I want Ezekiel Elliott to be healthy during the season. Oh, my God. My yeah. strength coach got to come with it. Right. He got to know what he's doing, along with the trainers and his massage person and chiropractor and all that. But um bro they gotta know what lifts we need to be doing um how many reps how many sets the percentage of the weight you know what i mean because i mean you see it all the time where you know there might be a team where all of a sudden all all these players are having hamstring is issues or yeah. knee problems right that yes. has to do with the strength and condition <sighs> along along with the practice reps and all that together you said though, that but, boss it's it's a big deal man it's a it's a i don't i think people don't really realize it sometimes they, I, I that's why i say it's the most because i looked at his background and mm -hmm. and i don't mean to ask another question did y'all want to say something about that real quick well no. well well no but yeah. I, I just have to add to this right quick uh you, you you're touching on some good points and i think that the Cowboys' schedule is always weird around thanksgiving mm -hmm. time because we have those multiple games back right. to back and it's a short area and I think it's like, what, three three games less than 14, sometimes less than 17 days or so. Mm -hmm. So that strength and conditioning coach is very valuable for the Dallas Cowboys. Exponential. And, mm -hmm. and yes, I will, like you said, it, that, that'd have to be seven figures. Uh, seven over, figures. Because yeah, yeah. I, I looked at Ronnie's background because obviously uh -huh. researching you for the show, I was researching everything about you, made me research him also. Uh, and in 2013, 11 of his 11 players that was on his offseason program mm -hmm. played the entire season. 2014, that's you, mm -hmm. 13 out of those 13 played the entire season. All of his undrafted free agents made rosters. <laughs> 2015, 13 out of 13 guys <laughs> played the entire season. Yeah. 2016, 16 out of his 16 professional athletes Played the entire season. 2017, 18 out of his 19 mm. professional offseason. That is a way better record than Dallas ever had. <laughs> yeah, man, that's uh, <laughs> impressive. I never even looked at it like that. See what like his numbers was. But like I said, man, he just challenges your body in so many ways that when you get to training camp, you're ready. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no... I got a little nick here. I got a hamstring. Nah, you're gonna be ready. So his summer, his summer program is the real truth, right? Like, <laughs> you know, like you say. So if it's true that y'all had like 13 different facilities that y'all trained in. Yeah, that's just one of his for I don't want to put his information out. Yeah, that's like true. That. Okay, that's right. You okay, know, but because yeah, yeah, I he, researched it lately. <laughs> time out, you right. Competitive intelligence, my friend. Yeah, yeah. But no, nah, he's very, very intelligent with what he does and how he does it um it's it's different you know and if you're not open-minded to it then when you get there you won't 
you won't stay there. But it's it's very great for athletes, especially um, NFL, of course, veteran and younger guys to, to be challenged in that way. Go ahead, guys. Sorry. Oh, okay. Because I mean, I, I feel all that, but I want to ask about, do you, are you, okay, so you said you're coaching high school football right now. Just said your first year, Tyler, right? All right. Are you still following the game right now? You're 29. Are you still following, like, following the Cowboys? Do you follow the Cowboys? I follow them a little bit. Uh -huh. Um, you know, I'm always peeking around and looking to see what's going on and mm -hmm. definitely watching the guys that I know. Like okay. um, me and Jordan Lewis, he used to work out with okay. running come and, okay. um, you know, that's one of the young guys that I was around, man. Love his game. Me too. Love his game. Good. Let's, uh, let's talk about man. that. Go ahead. Can, we, yeah. can, we, can I ask you a few questions about yeah. this guy? Sure. All right, I'm going to ask a quick question. <laughs> All right. So my question. Yeah. Okay, because, you know, I, I met Jordan a couple times. I like Jordan, but yeah. I don't know if he's going to come back. So, you got Jordan. We had Barry on here last week, yeah. and Barry said, "Throw the grenade, blow all this up, and start all over." <laughs> he That's said he, that too. He, he said, said "Throw the grenade, blow it yeah. all up." So you, yeah. a, you a cornerback? You know, you got Jordan on the team. Mm -hmm. You got uh, Xavier Woods. I know he's a safety, and then you got Cheeto. Okay, now we know about Trevin Diggs, and I, I think he's nice. But what's your kind of feelings about the cornerbacks that they have there right now? Mm -hmm. Do you see any of them coming back? And maybe, you know, what, what's this kind of your thoughts about the situation there with the cornerbacks, um, kind of in your opinion, just looking from afar? Um, one thing that I admire about the Cowboys, when they draft a guy, they're going to try to stick with him, mm -hmm. especially if he's a young guy. Um, now, I believe that there's there's only so many chances that you get, right? And that's coming from an undrafted guy because y'all know my chances was yeah, right. even yeah. further down. Mm -hmm. You know what yeah. I mean? But um, – I believe that there's nothing wrong with keeping those young guys, but I feel like they need a veteran yes. corner to come in. We've been talking about that's a dog, right? Yep. And uh, to kind of lead the way, because if you look at it, I don't. When's the last top veteran that they had in that second day to kind of lead them? Tyler, well, I'm well, glad you wait, go into that detail. Hold, hold on, I'm glad he said <laughs> top veteran because here's the thing. Yeah, you, you could bring in Nolan Carroll. You could bring in salute to Daryl yeah. Worley, right? Like yeah, he was a good guy, but that. but, you but that, that don't mean you <laughs> gotta be. I mean, you gotta be good. You gotta have some clout yeah. or you know some something on your resume that stated I've been consistently good in this league for a while, so I can come in right. here and tell a young Tyler Patman, hey, this is how you do it because I've been successful doing it this way. Yes, not. You know, a one-year rental that's been in the league for eight years, but he's been mm -hmm. a fifth, sixth corner and a special teams guy. Right. Like Dallas yep. needs, in my opinion, that's what they need to do. Bring in somebody back there, be it corner or or safety. Somebody back there, veteran-wise, to get mm -hmm. in that room and help them out. Yes, sir. No, oh, yeah. just like you yes, just said, yes, and, and you I'm, got a chance to play with, I guess, he was on your way on your last year with the Dallas Cowboys, uh, Byron Jones, when he was down there. Yes, yes. Um, yeah. Did you see that he was going to become the <laughs> cornerback that he was? Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Don't, don't be on his line. Don't be on his line. You, you a coach now. You're not playing. We're coaching man. now. Yeah. yeah. All right. So this Shoot. is the thing about Byron. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, I didn't think he was going to be a corner. I thought he was like he made he made the transition to safety, and I thought he was going to stay at safety. Mm -hmm. uh, but the thing about Byron, as you probably can tell, he's such a hard worker. And right. he pays attention to the details. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what he did when he went back to corner, right? He had, he got a few seasons under his belt, yeah. right? He kind of grew in the game. Um, and then he started playing a little smarter, right? He got those long arms. I started to see be patient and, and stay square at the line. And he kind of took his game to another level. Um, but, yeah, man, when he first came in, I was like, ah. Oh. You know, mm -hmm. I'm already there, so I'm like, man, this dude ain't messing with me. Uh, you know, yeah, I kind of a You know, you know, you know, uh huh. Okay, yeah, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, right. But you, you know. could tell he was gonna last long in in the league just because of how hard and how focused and attention to details he had, man. So I'm glad he panned out, man. It's a it's a great thing to see how he's playing right now. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, man, so if you were Jerry Jones, you would have kept him. You would have kept him on the team. You would have still drafted Diggs or what have you. And mm -hmm. it would have been just – that would have been what you needed. Right you keep there. on saying if it ain't happening, so why are you talking about I know, about? I know, it's I know. Over. So It's over. It's over. <laughs> hey, do you do you get a chance to look at any of the guys in the college right now, like the Sertains of the world? The, I haven't. I haven't been okay. real deep in the college. Um, what about your boy kinda, from Oklahoma State? 
Who's that? What's his name? Got drafted last year. What was it? Was it? Uh, was was it Terrell? What's the cat that came no. out of Oklahoma? Uh, State? You talking about AJ Brown? Yeah, that's who it was. A young cat. I don't even know if he got drafted. Now I think about it. See, I ain't even been able to watch his tape for real like that. Uh-huh. Um, I'm lucky, man. I get to uh, oh, Terrell's Clemson. I got a little. I got a little uh, access to steal some NFL film, so I'm able to watch it a little bit, man. And sometimes I get on there and watch some of those young corners and check them out, see what they're doing. And um, it's, it's, I love it. You know, I kind of, I'm kind of biased because I'm a five, five, I'm going to say 5'11 on a good day. On a good day, when you feel good. I feel you. I'm right there with you. Oh, little old corners, man. Little corners. Uh, but the game, you know, the game is kind of moving to that big corner, right? So it don't even matter though. But the five eleven corners, I've heard plenty of scouts, Tyler. Mm-hmm. The five eleven corners, they said they rather have those type of players because they can get up underneath those receivers. They have quicker hips. They have better recognition. They're better type players. It's just the fad of everybody going it's six. The three. fad, bro. Hey, fad. Oh, no, no, James. Bro. No, 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 no. What about this Dan Quinn system? Cover one. Hey, I play do the Cover three. Like, nope, I don't care. You, you get a you're five a baller, you're a baller. Oh, Tyler, you Tyler, how, how you gonna how you gonna play this defense right here? I don't care what you're how, how would you how would you play this Damn, defense that Dan Quinn is gonna enough. incorporate? <laughs> what's 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 he bringing in? Yeah, he's gonna bring three. in that cover one. It's gonna be the normal oh, stuff, funny. the corners, the yeah. you know, the universal stuff. I mean, like it, it gotta be, cover three. It Not gotta be ballers. Three. Like you just gotta be able to get out there, have that confidence, and be on that island, right? It's it's different on that island. Like you can't. I mean, big corners is great. You yeah. know, I feel like they gonna make a play every now and then. Yeah. Uh, but no, it's it's crazy because you see the you see the transition, man, of like big corners being able to have good feet. Like yeah. I played with I played with Jalen Ramsey, and he's one of them dudes that yeah, big but total small package. feet. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You you see him coming out of 45 degree break, and you like yeah okay. yeah yeah like. Yeah, when you, you see really it on like the big that. man, it is weird. It's like it's crazy, man. And this is how it is because you see a kid like uh, DK Metcalf, and you know front office is automatically thinking, "Oh, we got to go get somebody <laughs> big. Mm-hmm. We Imagine. need a six-one corner just to play with him." But if you are, you already know, I believe if you a baller, you are gonna baller. You are gonna find a way. Period. Hey, hey, so. how tall was Daryl Reeves? That's what I was just about to say. But you know what? Uh, I feel like also, if you study the game as well as your physical attributes, just like you said, with Byron, you look at the little things. You got to study that tape. You got to watch the film of your opponents. That's how you always going to get better. But I want to say one thing that you said, Tyler, bouncing off what the other guy said. I feel like the reason why we are lacking still, and I just feel like maybe this, this might be what it is, we don't get them dogs in free agency because mm-hmm. this is what I think. This is what Sky said. If a Nolan Keller, if a Nolan Carroll comes into the DB room and I'm a DB, I'm looking at Nolan Carroll. I don't give a hell. I'm looking at Nolan Carroll like you ain't better than me. So why the hell I'm listening to you? All right. You're not an upgrade to me. Right. If you come in with a dog, though, I'm like, okay, he been there and done it. I'm going to sit there and watch. I'll, just because you a dog over there don't mean I'm going to look at you a dog over here. Right. I'm going to watch how you practice. and, and that. But you'll have automatic a, a look of a different respect if you have a guy that's a dog come in. You're going to be looking at him different. And then if you see what he's bringing to the table, what he brought over there to here, I feel like you follow more and it brings up everybody maybe in the DB room, in my opinion. But I feel like we keep on getting these bargain guys that when you already got, I'm drafted and you bringing a bargain guy in, you're not better than me. Hmm. So while I'm looking at you like you're supposed to be telling me something, I mean, is that real, Tyler, or not? That's 100% real, Mm -hmm. right? You like, you're supposed to have that mindset anyway as a corner, right? Mm -hmm. I'm a dog, like you gotta have it. It ain't no... If fans are buzz about it. If you ain't got that mentality, you're gonna get cooked. Yes. So um, man, when you bring, like you said, you bring a guy that's kind of so so and man, they didn't pay this dude 1.1 million dollars to come and, and take my spot, and you kind of just hand it to him. Like dudes that feel truly disrespected. You know <laughs> what I mean? And so, like it's it's different when you bring in a a Pat P and a, a Revis or you know, whoever, then you like, okay, you know. So, so hold on. You said handed to him. Mm. See, because people don't believe that there are politics in professional oh, football. Oh, yeah. That that's what changes the game in the league. It's not it's not the football you played in high school or even college. It's 
bro. It's a business for real, right? And so if a dude is getting paid that money, he gonna get way more looks than you, and you gonna have to do everything right, and he gonna have to do a lot of wrong uh, for you to get that spot. So it's it's a crazy business for real. Um, yeah, we yeah. I I mean. It's it's like anything else. I mean, we we all play sports. We've seen it. We've seen it right. in high school when right. we play. We've seen coaches right. show favoritism, and then we've oh, seen yeah. no matter what you do, we've seen where parents had money in the boosters in high school, and they were the yeah. who's who. No matter what you did, you weren't playing. And right. he had to break his damn ankle for you to get some time. And boy, you better play like a monster you when you ankle. If you if you if, right. you if you if he catches one touchdown on your head, bye. Yeah, sit down <laughs> for real. For real, right? And that you just gotta imagine that favoritism with twenty million behind them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know right. it's, it's different. You have you know? no chance, right? right. Well, right. well, what right. it is right. is they gonna get that person a million chances. Right. To yeah, up. and you yeah. Yeah. they don't want to look right. wrong. And that's the bad thing, man. They um that happens to some young guys, and they never get a, a chance to really develop in the game. Yeah, you know, and they they don't get a chance to develop, and then their mental is messed up. Like, oh, I can't, I can't make a mistake. Now you tense and you're trying to play perfect, and it's just disaster. See, Dallas is. is... See, y- y'all listening to a player now. I just want everybody to know, y'all listen. He, go ahead though. I'm sorry. I was just in Dallas is, is has that issue before. We we gave up on a cat like that. Uh, Ward. Who did Jordan Lewis like that? Oh, oh Jordan Lewis is still playing. He gets a lot of time. Well, he didn't get it. He didn't get enough. But go ahead. I'm sorry. You don't think he got enough? No, Anthony oh, Brown yeah, took his rep. Now he has. Yeah, he and has. you know what? We'll talk about this all one that's time. Awful, yeah, that's we'll talk about yeah, yeah, yeah. I disagree debate. completely with that. He get it. I got. We'll talk about that. I'm talking about guys talk. like Ward and Terrence Mitchell. These guys yeah. never really got a, a, a solid chance Westry. and footing in Dallas. And look, yeah. they want to. You know, Mitchell been around the league and's played well, and Ward's Ward. been with the Chiefs and he's played well. So well, like, well, we see that too often here in yeah. Dallas. Yeah, and the thing about Mitchell, you know, we came in together. And um, I don't know if a lot of people know that he came in young. Like he came, he skipped a year, or he skipped a senior year and declared. Mm-hmm. And uh, there was a guy at Oregon that was supposed to do that, and he didn't. I forgot what his name was, but he was a big time. Um, and Terrence did it instead. Hmm. And, uh, bro, he was just so raw. He was so, so raw. And um, it was just like one of those dilemmas, man. It was me, him, BW, um, who else? Then we had Skandrick, B. Carr, mm-hmm. uh, Claiborne, and yeah. um, Corey Sterling White. Moore. Oh, Corey White just got transferred. Yeah, yeah Sterling yeah. Moore was still there. The room was thick. He and Corey so White was nice. Yeah, so y'all, was ball, right? y'all had the same team guy. So, I mean, you talking – and Sterling Moore played yeah, great but his last Sterling, year. There that's the other one, Sterling Moore, Moore. yeah. So, yep, yep. I mean, it was, it was a room full of guys that, you know – didn't have a lot of recognition, but they was y'all was underrated. Y'all See, was and you know what people don't bring up about y'all? The lack of pass rush y'all had for years. Mm-hmm. See, they people right, don't understand. No <laughs> he said, "No coming." <laughs> <laughs> you said, "Man, this is a DB. I can't hold him for six, oh, seven, man. seven man. seconds. I can't hold him in the seconds. Too much, man. Nah, and y'all know the Marinelli system is is just like the one y'all talking about about to come in. It's cover one, yeah, cover three. I mean, yeah. it's basic. Gotta get and, our, and our cover three is if he goes vertical. That's it. That's you. That's you. Right. So, um, man, it was tough. I think our sec, my second year. I think I think D Lawrence had got hurt. Yeah, that's what it was. And then I forgot. 15? Yeah, I forgot who else we had. Like it was, we were struggling. Yeah, I was, was banged up. And, then, and the guys that came along, they came along after you was gone. Right. Mm-hmm. So and and it take about three years for yeah. most defensive linemen to develop. But that's why y'all was underrated. Yeah. When well, they offer you that contract, why you didn't why you didn't take it? It, it said that you 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 refused and you went off to uh, Miami land. No, man. What happened was. Um, it was just one of those years. We were losing. We was losing. Uh, we got to the second to last game, and they actually released me. Mm-hmm. And they were like, "We're gonna put you on our practice squad." And so, um, you know, it was a lot of a lot of things that I did as a man, like the way I handled it. I was like, "Man, I'm not coming back," you know. And um, I didn't look at it from a business perspective. I probably should have stayed. Looking back at it, just because they knew me as a player. 
um mm -hmm. and being undrafted trying to go somewhere else is tough yeah you know what i'm saying yeah. and because they, they don't have the familiarity with you right and i made a bonehead mm -hmm. decision i went to miami um to 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 a place where there was an interim head coach mm -hmm. so after that year they left Damn. and a whole new staff came in yeah and so um that's what happened they tried to bring me back on practice squad and i was just kind of in my head ego like man i'm was not like yeah i felt disrespected i felt very disrespected mm -hmm. and um you know i just didn't like the way they handled the situation and um you know i felt like i needed to get out of there at that moment so See, i'm glad, that, we're, I'm glad we're hearing emotions because we all this we is just, real yeah, boy. people don't <laughs> that players just don't have them we man, yeah, people see, treat y'all oh, like, like like uh uh madden Dude. players yeah, this yeah, interview amazing. You know, yeah, and it's just the thing, man. When you feel like you don't deserve to be released and you get released, mm -hmm. you're gonna feel a type of way. Man. You know what I mean? And if I was older, I probably would have looked at it in a different light. Like I would have really broke it down what mm -hmm. I'm looking at. Mm -hmm. Uh but in that in that time, I'm like, man, this is this is BS. I don't right. feel like I deserve this. I need to get out of here. And I felt like I wasn't valued. So um, but it was a lot that went into it, man. I know that and it helped me grow so much as just a, a young man, bro, and just handling situations, um, business wise and relationship wise. So yeah. it was cool. It was it was all right. I learned a lot, man. Cause I know you're looking at 2016 team. They like, man, they winning now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, no, hey, Tyler, yeah. don't worry. We still choked it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't, yeah. Don't we would have been better with you though, really. Yeah, we, like, we, we would have been better with you, like, really. Yeah, really. yeah. Straight up. Yeah, but you know, I think that actually would have turned us the corner. Yeah, because he would have been over Anthony Brown. Got injured in 2016. Yep, and yep. Anthony yep. Brown was out there. You see, he, that was his rookie year. His rookie year was actually good. Yeah. Well, I, I think his best year probably, of his career. Yeah. That was, uh, who, so who was it? It was him. Byron. 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 No, 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 no. It was Byron. Byron. Safety, yeah, Byron's at safety. It was Carr. Carr. It's Carr. Maul. Hey, Carr was still there. Church. And then Heath was subbing with Wilcox. That's, right. That's Wilcox. the 2016 yeah. secondary. That's right. And Heath yeah. ended up starting, right? Yeah, no, he was rotating. Coming off the okay. He was rotating in church. He was better. Church was the man. Yeah. yeah. When you in church, I mean, y'all was solid. Like I love church game, man. Yeah, church man, game church was on. like Bro, like when he male. used to come up, when he used to tackle somebody and come up holding their foot. Like, How <laughs> you do that? That boy, boy, that boy tackling the game was <laughs> yeah. He, he wants, that's why yeah. all the damn tackles. <laughs> Yeah, Same, right. man. I'm talking about. I mean, he like came in, mail. Like, he delivered. Yeah. Like when he was not getting work in his first full year as a start, he had like 138 tackles. Yeah, no, yeah. it's crazy. It was ridiculous. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. But hey, I, I'm going to tell you right now, dog, I, I respect, you know what I mean? Because I feel like, and I ain't even trying to say I'm, but I always felt like I've been an underdog type player or a person in my life. So when I get underdog people that come on the on the rosters and fought and just listen when you say, man, I felt disrespected, man. Bump all that. I was, you was yeah. just saying, oh, I probably did the same thing. I probably be sitting just like you, like <laughs> old. I was just thinking about. It. I probably shouldn't did that, but when I was younger, <laughs> F you all you ain't disrespect me like that. Right. I, I, I just love how you came with the realness because oh, yeah. we love hearing that on here, but we don't. Yeah. Sometimes we don't get to hear the contracts and how the players feel about how they feel. Right. We want to hear yeah. how they feel, and we really appreciate you coming on and saying that because yeah. people think these players are robots. People exactly. think these players are, don't have emotions. People think just because they make all this money that they ain't normal people. Mm -hmm. Yes, they have normal emotions just like me and you. And, oh, yeah. and, and like a job, well, if we feel disrespected on pay, mm -hmm. so do y'all. So I'm glad you uh, brought that realness, man. Oh yeah, super real. So. Indeed, man. Indeed. <laughs> yeah, you cut. You cut. Basically, kind of ended it right there, John. I dropped the clue bomb. Can I get a clue bomb? I got you, brother. I got you. Hold on, let me find a clue bomb for you. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> All right, parting shots for uh, Tyler, man. No, nah, man, I, I enjoyed it. I wrote down literally what you said, Big James. I was going to talk about that after James. when we recapped it was morale and emotions. They not robots. That's exactly what I wrote down. Yeah. It's a, and, and you know, it's, I wasn't expecting this level of candor. I was not, <laughs> you know, but you, you gave all of us and the people that's watching right now across all social media channels, just honesty and reality of what it's really like being in the locker room. And then right. just from corner to corner, yeah, 
You are in love. I love to hear the mentality because I know the mentality. It's right. the like you said, it's the mentality you have to have to play that position. And and, and even how you sized up Byron coming in, that's all real talk. That's right. that's honest. That's like you're gonna size up the guy that's coming in. And you you came away like confident. That's just it was just I loved it, man. It was cool. Oh yeah. Appreciate y'all having me. Can't wait me, to do man. it again, man. Hey, man. Oh, yeah, I'm going to check y'all out for sure. Yeah, definitely, dog. Yeah, man, we appreciate you coming through, dog. Get a round of applause for Tyler Patton, y'all. Hey, and Tyler, I want to ask you one last question. What actual football team are you coaching in high school so I can kind of, you know, follow that? I, I, I'm I at uh, North Forney High School right now. Okay. Yes, okay. sir. Okay. We're going to move up. And yeah. what positions are you coaching? Are you coaching cornerbacks? I'm coaching secondary right now. Like, oh, yeah, you're about to get a move up for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yes, indeed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. in the league, give you about five yeah. years. Yeah. I see you in college. Yeah. Look, look. Right. Hey, hey, and let's, let's, let's remember this because we were here first. So when he go again, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> remember that. Remember we, that. You I was over you. here first talking right. about it. We knew. We all knew right. all y'all did. Yeah, <laughs> I got you. All right, good brother. You take it easy, man. All right, too much to unpack. Y'all be blessed. You too. Salutes. Good stuff by, um, by Tyler, man. Absolutely good stuff. Wow. Uh, we'll wrap that up here in a quick second. I'm just get everybody plugged back in. Um, yeah, let's get everybody back. Law, there you go, Law. Oh, we good now. I ain't got to do nothing. <laughs> That's the fight. We'll I'm back. quick with it, baby. Let's go. Bang. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm good. We back now. I do that. Uh, man, that was good, though, uh, boss, man. Appreciate you getting Tyler to come I like Tyler. He was right. He real like chill. Tyler. Lay yeah, back, real cool chill, dude, man. Laid back, yeah, yeah. Granted, a humble for everybody guy. that don't know, he said he was going to do only five minutes. That's the longest five minutes in life. I know. James <laughs> got him. That wasn't even me, homie. That was yeah, okay. James got, got, got him. Hey, when he you me, shot, you shot through I you under said, the bus real quick, B. I said, dog, no. <laughs> then I got, yeah, I got a text message about five, five, six two minutes. Two minutes later, James said, 20. I'm like, all right, I know he done did something. He done said something. James said, I got three more questions. James you want to sit down? He said, yeah, <laughs> James, like, I'm going to ask him. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you ain't getting on here in no eight minutes, five, eight minutes. You on minimum 15, 20. Yep. <laughs> you, uh, but no, it was, it was good, man. It, it was real good. And I, I hope he has, he has some success with coaching and whatnot. And uh, we can get him back on here. Uh, maybe if he if he uh, has any insight on some of these players that are drafted, it definitely if we draft some cornerbacks, so, which oh, yeah. we need technique and everything. And you know, like I said, I just like how he was talking about how players really feel. Like yeah. you know, we heard Cole Beasley said, you know what, I felt disrespected by the offer. They ain't even so I, I'm dipped, you know. And we hear, and I'm not bashing Dallas, so don't think I'm bashing the front office now. But I I hear a lot of players, not just in the ordinance, hey, I felt disrespected by that offer, so I wasn't doing that. And it's real, just like I said, a real job. Like, you work your ass off, you feel like well, you deserve to get this money. And they're like, oh, here, a quarter. What? And and, and, and we shouldn't be surprised. That, <laughs> right. That's we the should. Cowboys right. MO. Right. Huh. Another thing that kind of stood out to me was when he said, um, just being honest, he said, when it feel like a guy has it handed to him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, that that so that's is somewhere in his point of view and his memory, that was a locker room feeling of a guy somewhere we can all speculate to where it does and it affects morale. So like it's as a fan base, I think sometimes we act like morale is not don't exist with Dallas. We just act like we could talk about the players in public, use them in negotiations. Um, put people that's undeserving and keep them coming back like they did with Witten, with whole snaps from your younger guys that should have developed. Mm-hmm. It's all of that stuff. It's, he talked about the team effect. And I mean, I think we were so lucky to get a guy that's fresh out of playing because you're not going to, most players go speak politically correct. Right. But the fact that he's already moved on in his career, he could sit there flat footed and speak honest. And I think it was great insight for those who just paid attention to the show today. You talked yeah, about stuff, morale, and it's, it's crazy because didn't we see that this year on the defensive side of the ball with the coaches? I, from everything that we've been reading coming out of Dallas, from the defense coordinator to uh, Tom Sula, and I guess probably some of these secondary coaches, there really wasn't any cohesion. There really wasn't any uh, 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 camaraderie. It sounded like everybody was on different pages. And when you really go back and look, when you grab somebody from here and somebody from there and somebody from here and, and bring them all together in the situation we were in, probably something like that's going to happen. 
Nobody bought into to, to uh, not Dan Quinn. Nobody bought into Mike Nolan. They probably didn't buy into Jim Tom Sula. The word coming out is that the teaching wasn't there, right? And that, you got older guys like that. That's probably what's happening. And now they're bringing in, they're ushering in these new coaches. Dan Quinn's a little right. bit younger, right? This is his first gig becoming a defensive coordinator since being a head coach. Uh, he brought in his guys, but but guys, let's calm down on this because I think we're getting out of hand in Dallas Cowboys Nation when coaches bring in their own guys, boss. Yeah, James man. And Law, no, that is yeah. that is common. If you go right. look around the league, that literally happens on every team. And to be honest with y'all, I don't know how this is going to work out. But I'm just giving my two cents real quick, and I'll let you go. Yeah, I'm. I'm okay with Dan Quinn bringing in people that are going to be on the same page as Dan Quinn because they work with Dan Quinn. <laughs> we just saw – you went and got Al Harris from Chiefs. You went and got Mo Linquist, college. You went and got Jim Tom Sula, Washington. You went and got uh, – what's the cat's name? Uh, uh, Mike Nolan, New Orleans. And you put them in a melting pot and said, fix it. In three months on Zoom. Yeah. None of them have the same type of mythologies. They all have to get on the same page, and it didn't work. So maybe you need to bring in people that are on the same page as your head man. So I'm okay with, with Dan Quinn bringing in his guys to implement his scheme. I don't necessarily know that Mike Nolan brought in his guy. I'm not saying that it would have mattered, but nonetheless, that was a cluster F. I digress. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, I, I think that is two sides to the coin uh, when, when we say the buddy-buddy system. And, and, of course, a coach got to feel comfortable running his scheme and his system and implementations because that's that's what all coaches do. I believe in the hearts of hearts, coaches coach coaches, meaning that, okay, they brought in Aiden to be the defensive line guy. He didn't have experience as defensive line guy in Atlanta, but he was an outside linebackers coach. I think that he will be the guy that Dan Quinn can reach out to and say, okay, this is what I want the front four to do. Although I'm going to have my hand on it, right? But I, I trust Aiden more than I trust any of any other anybody else. I trust him more than I trust Jim, Jim, uh, Tom Sula, whoever, right? So we have to give it a time to grow. And, and objectively speaking, I think that this is the right way. But the only problem is, is that I know a lot of people are going to look at your previous record and say, hey, wait a minute, you know, and that's just unfortunate. I think it's a little bit of both. I think it's uh, because Mike McCarthy has a bad ref sheet on defense. We have to Thanks. start being honest about that now because it's starting to seem to follow him. Like, And I'm not even quite on board with the defensive line coach that they just hired. It's, it's a little bit too green for my liking. The fact that he only coached linebackers before and then he was over quality control for two years, a coach only one year. Then you put him in a group of men that doesn't have the, the that doesn't have the right feel to me. Um, sometimes you can hit on a genius like um, like like our offensive coordinator. I was just Kellen about Moore. to say, how you feel about Kellen Moore? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I mean, I'm think I'm looking at it balanced, you know. But it's yeah. one of those things that my initial thought when I look at McCarthy's history is I don't blame people that have a healthy amount of skepticism. But I also was crazily thinking about what you said, uh, Sky before the show where I know Ronnie Braxton. <laughs> I know him well. I went mm -hmm. to school with Ronnie Braxton. So to be all the way candid about that and, and, and transparent about that. And I was thinking it's going to probably sound biased for me to vouch for him. Right. right. But it's, I, but it's also a benefit that I know him because I knew him. So he never knew that I was going to end up maybe interviewing one of his players, right? So as I'm interviewing one of his players, I'm like, I knew because I was out there when y'all was one day having a session and I saw you in real time fully focused on guys not getting injured. You know what I mean? Like emphatic about it. So it's so sometimes your relationship has a major advantage because if you're going to knock, to your point, Will, if we're going to knock – uh, Mike McCarthy for one coach, then you shouldn't give him no credit for filming. You got to give him credit for filming because he got that relationship yeah. higher, extremely right. Yeah. You know, so I, I think it's a, I think, but it's, but I am concerned because 
That's va- that's valid to have concern. I mean, what, what? How can we be super confident after last year? In, in right. Anything? Right. I think skepticism. Especially right now, defense. Yeah, definitely. Hell yeah, on defense. Because it's starting to follow him, and then I'm looking at your current picks, and I'm like, Do you put that on a head coach though? An offensive. He's an offensive guy. Right. And I, I'm gonna tell you what was going through my mind today, bro. I'm just being all the way honest. Yeah, that's the only way I'm gonna be, man. Is some some people don't like power around them. Like I heard people say loving us when we do shows because they say, you know what? There are four people that got voices in this in the cowboy, but they come together. People not used to this, right? <laughs> like this is not <laughs> normal. Like usually there's ugly rivalries and fights and pettiness. And I'm just starting to wonder. I mean, obviously I'm not the roach on the wall to see the conversations. But Mike McCarthy, do you have a problem with sharing power? Do you have a problem with picking guys with better resumes? Because Quinn, I'm just speaking honest, man. He was the cheap seats. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, fired midseason. You you haven't had a top 10 defense literally only once your whole tenure at Atlanta, even though you wasn't a head coach. I mean, the defense coordinator, the buck stopped with you, and you're supposed to be a defensive coach. You was literally known as Comeback City, bro. Like, literally, when we was playing them and they had that big lead, I said, thank God it's Atlanta. And, I mean, that that's the day of the game, and I posted that, thank God it's Atlanta, because it's like we got hope. So that's cheap seats to me, meaning his resume was poor, right? And we have all these good coaches in the playoffs right now. Come on now. We got good, we got good coaches in the playoffs right oh. now. That's the, that's the oh. premier. Oh. Damn, that was time out. Time out. I'll just play it. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, like Spagnoli for Kansas City. We saw what he he has a oh, track oh, record. Oh, oh, oh. How'd he do as a head coach? No, 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 no. No, I'm saying right now, judging the current resumes. Okay. Like, we know as a D coordinator that he did much better on that defense than what we've seen out of Quinn. How did Spags and do as a head coach? As a head coach, I'm not even sure. He was not good. So, now was he a now was he was his defense good though? No. <laughs> the, the his team defense was bad. Scott, was his no. players? <laughs> was his players bad? Well, yeah, the, I believe it was the Rams. Not mistaken, y'all. Right? Uh, uh, Rams, bad team. But they now, was a bad team as a whole. I, boss, I completely. I, I think I, I'm pushing back, and I don't want to take over the Boss and Steel show. No, no, no. But no. this is the dialogue I want to have. This is why yeah. I'm glad I got this. Is a good here one because good. it's good. interesting. Because you Bear. say his resume, right? His resume as a head coach. Yes, question it. But his resume as a defensive coordinator, how how really can you can you say it's it's uh what was the word you said it was? For low variety cheap, or cheap? cheap seats. How a cheap seats higher. Okay, so so is is his resume as a DC cheap sheets after having you know going to the Super Bowl, won the Super Bowl, of course not great defense. Mm-mm. Okay. So But you can say the same thing on Mike Nolan then. No, I can't. Yes, you can, because he also got a Super Bowl. He also had him a top five defense, and actually he had more. Oh, when, when did no, Mike he, Nolan win? Did Mike Nolan win the Super Bowl as a DC? No, Mike Nolan. Um, yeah, when he was with uh, on the Marvin, Marvin Lewis won the Super Bowl as a DC with the Raiders. Oh, that's right. He was the DC. He was what? He was the linebackers coach. He was something he on the staff. He eventually he became the defensive that, coordinator. He inherited that defense. But I can say this because I did research all though, of their. I researched all of the resumes yeah. like before I start talking about the defensive coordinators. He actually built him a top five defense way more than Quinn. So. This is very hard to judge. Like, this is not an easy analysis that we're going through. No. But it's just the timing, because I think with all of them, you have to also look at the talent, right? Right? Because that's fair, right? You can't give a even a great coach bad talent. They go, right. they, they go stink. Right. So, but at the same time, you was known for comebacks? I'll get to that. I, w- I don't want to go. Y'all go ahead and, re- and re- rebut or, or add on to, to bosses, and then I'll come back. Go ahead, Law. I ain't got nothing to say. I'm just not buying this offseason <laughs> optimism, bro. Not yet. There's no optimism. And it's getting worse. There's bro. no – for Man. throw optimism out. We just speaking – we speaking fact. You speaking your this truth. Too. And you're, Quinn, you're facts. Let's also talk about the fact that Quinn – and this is 
because I also I don't want people to think that I'm just all the way out on Quinn. I like some of the things that they've done with Quinn. I like Wit. I like the Wit pick because I think McCarthy really got his butt kicked by Wit. You know what I mean? Because you know how it is. You respect people that beat you up. <laughs> They're straight up, right? Like right. throughout life. The bully gets no respect until you beat him up. So when you are high on a coach that was the competitor to you on the same team, he was likely whooping you and earned your respect. So that's why I like the wit pick. And obviously I like the offensive line coach. That worked out great. His resume is is, is excellent as an yeah, offensive dope. line coach. Yeah, it's excellent. And but <clears throat> but Quinn. When you had to have basically, you can argue which defense was all time. Legion of Boom, 85 defense, or the Ravens with Ray Lewis in 96. Those are all that was a top three all time defenses. So could it be and Denver too? But it's uh, but I would say this about Buccaneers, Quinn. Buccaneers, I would say this about Quinn. I would say this about Quinn that I do like, because I don't want to just talk about what I didn't like. What I do like, it's very obvious to me. It's very obvious to me that the players love him. His defensive players, they get behind him. And I saw that from Atlanta, and I saw that just from my research. And I know y'all saw, saw the same thing. Um, Atlanta and, and Seattle, they get behind him. And that's a good sign. That's right. a good sign. Um, I just, I just, I wouldn't want us to be shopping from the cheap seats because we're trying to control you. Now, feel me mm -hmm. on that. Like, because guess who else, if you really think about it, was a cheap seat hire? I say Mike McCarthy was cheap seats a little bit too. <laughs> Not as bad, but it's like when you, when you hire these people that sit in their dormant, you can control them, possibly. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, my, my, Mike McCarthy was a, a hire, a, a, a I don't got time hire. Jerry said, I ain't got time to hire Joe <laughs> Brady. I ain't got time to hire Matt Rule. I ain't got time to hire Patrick Graham. I need a coach who did something because I, I ain't got time. And that's what that was. Uh, you know, there's some young, bright coaches out there that could have been hired, but it would have took time. Some... Or <laughs> both. It would have took time. No, you have to get that right. Just let everybody know I'm not sleeping when I read the comments. It's just I'm looking down, so that's the only way I can read the comments. Yeah, I'm that's why I was trying to let Law so. James go yeah. because because I got I got some stuff I want to talk yeah. about, but but I don't want to I don't want to keep interrupting y'all. Say about no Quinn dog. I didn't already said it. I felt like it was a, a shut up signing. I'm not hating on Quinn at all. I'm not saying he's a bad coordinator for the team. I just feel like, just like you said, Scott said that Jerry's 79 years old. He's going to say, well, you know what? I ain't 50 now. I'm 79 years old. I'm 80. Uh, Quinn got a Super Bowl. He had the Legion of Boom, just like when he brought in Richard, just like when he brought in McCarthy, because McCarthy won a Super Bowl with Aaron Rodgers. He like, I ain't got time to wait. So this dude got a yeah, resume. We'll and did this so let's get your ass on over here and let's hopefully let's make this happen now because i ain't got time to wait good that's thing, what good thing james he's not 60 something like uh nolan was he's not 70 something like uh kiffin was he's not 60 70 something like uh, Ki uh the other, not kiffin what's the other rod marinelli you see yeah. we, we, we always bring in these old ass defensive coordinators and expect them to relate to these young bucks now marinelli salute to him he did what he could do I'm not going to knock Marinelli too much. It just kind of got stale and it was time to move forward. They could have just did that with Chris, honestly. They could have just, I felt like that would have been the best thing to do. Promote within because you need that continuity. But I'll get back to that. Um, Law, anything to add there? Well, it's good that we do have now a, a younger defensive coordinator. Uh, but I'm, I'm just sitting here waiting for like week one, week two, <laughs> week three before I give my evaluation and my assessment of no, Quinn. No, no, no. Everything is wait and see. Yeah, it's yeah, wait yeah, and see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything's wait and see. Because last year I was so happy and go lucky with the other. I was going to bring in some, <laughs> some new talent. It's going to be this and going to be that. And, and it just didn't ever came out to where I wanted to be, you know? Yes, we understand, Jay, that Gus Bradley was the, the defensive coordinator before Dan Quinn. We understand that. We understand yeah. that. That, that, yeah. that. That don't mean you take away what Dan Quinn did. With the defense, I mean, you just got to build Quinn another that's, Legion of Boom. If that's the, and, and, and see, on top of that, because if that's the case, you need Brad to take away every head yeah. coach all their accolades if they had great players. Take it away, Bill Walsh. Yeah. Nope, no. don't give him any credit. Nope. Tom Landry. Nope, nope, nope. Don't not, give not him all no of them. Nope, nope. All see, of them. Some of them rebuild. See, like Marvin Lewis, he rebuilt another top five defense. And what and did that he top rebuilt. five defense do for him? 
nothing because it's offense stink. When you got a quarterback, no, they did not you got a quarterback. Oh no, they did stink. Like when Andy Dalton Andy got you in the playoffs. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Yo, dog. Uh, Cincinnati defense was nice, and yeah, they got I, I, a lot I'm of sleepers. I'm not disagreeing, but and he got a lot of 16 sleepers. Sixteen years, that defense couldn't win one playoff game for him. No, because that offense was that bad. Like it, it, when when Andy Dalton play makes the playoffs four times with three Pro Bowls. Andy Dalton's trash. Get in there and <laughs> throw one there. touchdown to seven also, interceptions. Also, also got in there. That is not your defense. Also got in there with Palmer. Hey, last year in the playoffs before Marvin Lewis got fired, it was them doing the stupid stuff at the end of the game when uh, your boy fumbled the ball when they had the game won. Andy Dalton had got hurt, and they had the game won, but, but that running back from LSU fumbled in the game, and then they came back and lost. So the Bengals did stupid stuff to beat themselves in because they really could have won that last playoff game against Pittsburgh. Yeah, was- and then when I look at all the players he's turned around and all the efforts that he made to make players better, like Marvin Lewis had players staying in his house to keep him out of trouble, man. <laughs> Made the sacrifices for that yeah, defense. Had all kind of nutcases on. Yeah, but them nutcases was balling. That, that we was had nutcases and, and in I, the '90s. And I don't want to. I want to compare Marvin and because that's. I mean, listen, Marvin yeah, Lewis yeah, was he, never up for this job. Just this just is what it is. It's not like they brought Marvin Lewis in to if if they brought him in to interview, then yeah, we can compare. Him. But they just, hired the Quinn so fast, man. It, no, no, but boss, it wasn't. The, everything that came out was that they already were looking into this and actually did their homework and did their behind the scene in December. Yeah, I know. And that's too December. fast. That's too I, fast. How was a month too fast? Okay. Well, Our my thing is, I, I, I feel what Boss is saying, and I see what you coming at too, Sky. They did all of their homework on a certain guy. But what Boss is saying is that, hey, you know, by you singling in on one person, why not bring in a Robert Salah? Uh, or why not bring in somebody bring in a, that's like the Marvin no, don't Lewis? Say Robert Salah. Don't say Robert Salah. Don't say Robert Salah. You're not bringing in a defensive coordinator to be a defensive coordinator. But I, but Marvin Lewis, maybe they did that. Remember, he was brought yeah. in. He was interviewed. They, what more did you need to hear from Marvin Lewis? Well, yeah, but it was, I mean, that was interviewing for a head coaching job. But you don't think he came in there and said, Marvin, how, what is your, how do you uh, change the I change don't the know. And he just one name. I had that's like just one six. Name. Right. That's just, that's why I don't Like I had six. Name. That's like, I felt like you should at least check under the hood first before you get the cheap seats. Who, you, who you, are your six though, uh, boss? Man, I had Spagnolia. Um, I had uh, Bowles. They uh, weren't None of this. So why are you talking? Why are we talking about this? That I'm you, talking about you, shop At least shop they going to do it. They weren't going to shop. We know this, boss. We just had a show with me and you talked about <laughs> yeah. it. So why are we playing the I mean, imaginary it, thing? I mean, I'm just no saying, because see, we might have to talk about this in the future. It's not happening. We're talking about it now, because we might have to revisit this in the but future. Say, we said this, damn it. And we then said it. Like we got to talk it about it. Matter. We knew that if even if they were talking for him a month, we knew they were going to go the more comfortable, safe route. Yeah, that that's was safe. And, that, and that's what we got to acknowledge that, because it, it's better to say it now. It was safe. It was, I'm not drinking this off-season Kool-Aid. Because remember, they, they gave us a big cup. A that juicy cup of Thompson being the best safety. Y'all remember that cup? They also gave an off-season cup of, of receiver by committee. <laughs> but, didn't the dance. This, but didn't Jerry tell us this? And he said, I made a mistake and I did all of this. Back the safe route. I went out there and it was dangerous. I went out there to try to be scary. And guess what? It bit me in my ass. So guess what? I'm going back to being safe. So let me get Dan Quinn up in here quick as hell. Let me throw. Let me throw. You diff- get you. You didn't get your D line coach or what you're coaching. Let me throw you. A, well, well, you got to understand though, boss. Quinn is the D line coach. Let's just be real. He's the okay. D line guy. He. That's. It is what it is. But nonetheless, let me give you some a different perspective okay. to think of. You called Quinn a cheap sheet hire. Whatever. It doesn't. Whatever yeah. Yeah. Call. Yeah. No doubt. What no would doubt. you have called Spags after he got fired from the Rams? Uh. I don't know his records. See, they had the 26th look, ranked defense. I would have to look, they see, had to, because we're not dealing with one bad year. See, because I judge Witt way different than I judge a Quinn. Because, see, Witt went. Oh, so let me finish. Because, he went from the because, Browns to the Atlanta. Go ahead. Let me finish. Spagnolio mm-hmm. had 1-15 in 15 his first year in St. Louis, 31st ranked defense. Mm-hmm. His last year in St. Louis, 26th ranked defense. 
Right. What would you have called him after he was he was fired? Cheap I, seats. I, no, not just because of the record. It was because of the reputation. Like, what? What? what it what, wasn't what? just the record. Okay. It's, You're talking about because of the boneheaded, like like giving up all the leads. It's all of it. Getting fired mid season, getting ran out of town, mixed that Spagnuolo in. Spagnuolo went one fact- and fifteen and two and fourteen. He should have been yeah. fired. Well, I mean, been then Jimmy to... Johnson should have been fired. Sometimes you got to see. That's why I'm saying I'm looking Ow, at Quinn. Different... Yeah, because I'm looking at Quinn over a longer period of time, too. So, like, I can see every coach should get their time to have an up and down because that's sometimes depend on talent. Right. right. So did Quinn? See, Jimmy Johnson came in with trash talent. It was also three and thirty two or four what? and thirty two. We only went... won like four games. His first two years. Eight and eight, eleven and five, ten and six, went to the Super Bowl. Then had two down years. And then he started off bad this year. But I'm not judging him by wins. I'm judging him by his defensive performances. He and when was I the look, defensive coach until the defensive coordinator until 2019. Well, I'm still or judging him. As, it's okay. So if I have an offensive minded OC, that shouldn't be a reflection of my also OC. No, 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 no. Huh? no fair. It's fair. I'm just saying if you're, if you're, if you're, I don't know how you're you're judging them, but just let you know, bringing context to this thing. Yeah. Yes, he wasn't a DC. Nonetheless, he's a defensive man. No, yeah, man. we know he wasn't a DC. He's a, but he's but a it's defensive like if man. This is so supposed it's, to be your specialty. Right, right, right. You're supposed to have the override button to right. prevent all these epic ass comebacks. And so, the fact that so many of these on your resume, I have to call it what it is: cheap seats. Now, can we win with? But can him? you bring context to the? Can you bring context to it. He's a head coach, no, no longer responsible yeah. for one That's, area. Yeah. Of the of the team anymore. True, true. That and is a lot context, of times. I would add that context. When those defensive coordinators become first time head coaches, they flame out because they're not used to do a lot of hit. Not even just not even just defensive coordinators, head coach or uh, coordinators. Period. And right. you 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 like again. I'm gonna use a cheap sheets. I like that. I like the term. Yeah. Leslie yeah. Frazier. Mm-hmm. Not good as a head coach. Been great as a defensive coordinator ever since. Dennis Allen. Yeah. Not good as a head coach. Has been a good defensive coordinator. Ty Bowles, yep. not good as Doing a head good. coach, been great as a defensive coordinator. Right. Steve Spagnola, not good as a head coach, been Killing good as a defensive it. coordinator. Killing um, it right Chuck now. Chuck Pagano, flamed out as a head coach, yep. killed it as a defensive coordinator. Like, I like so, Wade so, Phillips, you got to throw Wade in there. Yeah, Wade, 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 Wade the average def- all head coach, great defensive coordinator. My point is, and a lot of these defensive coordinators that were head coaches were first time head coaches, flamed out. Became defensive coordinators in either that first or second year, their teams were really good defensively, or at some point they they got their momentum back. Right. So my thing is, it's okay. I think the reason why we're all down, not all down, there's skeptic skepticism with Quinn, is what happened in Atlanta, how it ended, rightfully yes. so. Yes, right. And and how the season went for the Cowboys. And that. So when you mesh right. those two together. You, it's hard you get to, me. It's, you get both. It, right. It's hard to feel positive. And I'm not throwing any I'm optimism not. out here. This is, <laughs> like I said, throw optimism away and let's just bring context to this yeah, matter and, here. And I see and, the can positive. I add one, let me add one cent to it, not two. Yeah. But we had uh, Chris Richard, too, that was, uh, uh, I guess, part of our Dan Quinn system. And we was talking about the same thing. So it seems like we're repeating the same thing over and over again. So go, y'all go ahead. I tell you where I came up with the term chief seats, okay? Because actually, it really wasn't in relation to just his job performance. It was more so in relation to the types of people who were fired midseason. Mm. Okay. So when you look at the people that's fired midseason, I call that whole group chief seats, and I did a show about it. Okay. So when you look at Bill O'Brien and we let, uh, well, who was that offensive line coach we let go? Oh, Alexander. Yeah. So, and 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 when you're let go mid-season? But it wasn't like mid-season year one. But, boss, don't you think that was a smart thing to do? If you know, like, okay, we're not moving forward with this coach, we need to get, get on our search now. Well, no, I mean, I mean, no, not mid-season. Like, it, it depends if – if you're just bad, yes. So, like, people that I was ready to fire midseason was like Mike Nolan. It was that bad. So, it was that when bad you, in Atlanta. 
Yeah, no, but like Mike Nolan, I'm on record about game four, game five, doing shows with Big Game James. He asked me, are you out? I said, I'm all the way out. So I would have missed his rebound, which even though it was rebound on good, bad teams, it was still a rebound. But at the same time, that's a cheap sheet. Because think about it. Would we would have all Ron been happy. Now, hold on real quick. We would have all been happy if we fired Mike Nolan midseason, wouldn't we? Yeah. Yeah, we would have been happy. So Atlanta, now put yourself in Atlanta shoes where you're the Atlanta team and you just watched the coach that you <laughs> hate the Cowboys picked up. You saying the same thing. You saying, y'all picked up our trash. That's what they're saying. We got rid. We didn't even want him. If and he was hired better. as a head coach, yes. I, I'm of the essence that it is different being strictly responsible for one part of a team as opposed to the entire team. And I forget, yeah. I think it was Brian Broaddus or somebody brought it up where it's the little things that we don't really think about as fans, making sure that people, you know, the team is getting where it needs to get to, organizing when you get there, making sure special teams, offensive line, defensive line, uh, my secondary coach, my, my assistant offense, all these things are taking away from what your specialty was to the point sometimes you don't even call the plays or really implement the game plan all the way like that anymore. Ask Mike Zimmer, and, and Law, we and you talk about this before, Right. Uh, George Edwards was defensive coordinator by name. Mike Zimmer called the plays on game day. But if you go back and listen to Mike Zimmer, he'll tell you, oh, yeah, I called the plays and, and I helped with the game plan. But George Edwards was my man. I couldn't do it if I didn't have him with me. So while he's the head coach and the coordinator, he's only doing that because he got a guy that's doing that for him or with him. Whereas yeah. some of these walk around guys, they can't do that. And we found out Nolan can't, or not Nolan, I'm sorry. Quinn can't, Quinn not a walk around guy. Quinn, Quinn a coordinator. And that's okay. Be a coordinator. Will it work here? Who the hell knows? But I do think that I think he could be a def good defensive coordinator in this league. It just may not be with Dallas, but I still think he'll at some point get that back together. So, so I don't far, have any reason. To I would think say it like this I'm like Law. I'm like big game James on this. See. I'm super wait and see, man. And I'm actually not excited. I'm 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 feeling like. What would like you have been excited for if we'd hired? Uh I would have been excited for um uh, Spagnolia. Who for sure. Him? Marvin, for sure. I would have felt great. I would have felt great. I would have felt like that was probably one of the top nice. bowls I would have felt good about. I uh, mean, realistic ones. Like like nobody's laterally coming to the Cowboys, in my opinion. Like why would Spags leave the Super Bowl champion Chiefs to be the Dallas Cowboys defense coordinator? You know what I mean? Why would Todd Bowles leave the Buccaneers to be the defensive coordinator in Dallas? Money talks sometimes. No, 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 money no, 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 no. does talk sometimes. Why would those organizations say, yes, I'll give you permission to go be the same job over there? They're not going to do that. Yeah, and so we could take him off the list for uh, feasibility. Now, no, Marvin, he's not though, as feasible. Yeah, one. but Marvin and then... And I wish I had my list in front of me. I had like eight because I did a show on this. So I researched them all. Obviously, when we hired them, I just divorced it out of my head. Well, some but young it, guys. Uh, no, most of them was veteran. Most of them were, and they was four three defensive coordinators. Mm -hmm. They weren't three four hybrids or anything like that. The the closest one to the hybrid was Ty Bowles, who will go hybrid on you, and he'll do it based on skill set. But the uh, what was my coach that was a head coach for the Raiders? Can't remember his name. Dennis Allen. Oh. No, Rio, Del Rio. I like Del Rio, Dale. Okay. Um, you know, he was one of them. Uh, I ain't that I would mm -hmm. have been excited for Wade. Just yeah, Wade. I would have been excited yep. for Wade. Yeah, I would have been excited for Wade. Maybe biased because I like Wade as a coordinator, but I would have been excited for that. Yeah, yeah, I would have felt like, and so, and, and it's all about I because I don't want to give him too much credit for the legion even though i give him a lot of a good credit because i say for the legion you still manage those guys i can't take away the fact that you manage those guys you, you right. manage those guys great uh, i just don't want to feel like in order to even have a top 15 defense i got to give you similar types well then we asking for a one in 30 type defense which is not gonna happen especially within one but year i don't mean to interrupt boss but isn't this the same thing where we talk about I'm not hating, but Dallas going out and getting the name people. We went out and got the names last year. We went and got Poe. We got McCoy. We was excited about it, right? We feel me? Because we hadn't seen that, but we'd like to get the names. And if it's a no-name guy, we're like, who the hell is that? Why? He sucks. I mean, that's what it is. Yeah. And 
Batman is a name guy. Why do what do But a lot of when, name when guys it's a name with bad research too. It's a name with bad research because if you when they got Poe and McCoy, and the first thing you think about with Dan Quinn, you don't associate him with Atlanta. You associate him with that Legion of Boom and that damn Super Bowl. That's what the hell you associate with him, and that's why Cowboys fans got excited. Right, and and so so De so Todd Spags, Dennis Leslie, all former head coaches are considered names. They're not names like a Dan. Quinn. You say a Todd Bowles is a name. Bigger name than Dan Quinn because he got a Super Bowl. What do you mean, bigger name? You, you. I'm saying these are names, but when we're talking about a Dan Quinn, what do you remember him as? Do you remember Todd Bowles as anything? As a well, yes, because he's one of the one of the, one of the best defensive coordinators in this league. Okay, but I'm asking you, do you remember Dan Quinn more than you remember a Todd Bowles? I'm and you about what? Super Bowls, no. But I hey, respect but, Todd Bowles as one of the best defensive coordinators in the league like he is but he's not gonna get that chance and cowboys went for dan quinn you went we remember you at the legion of boom so we what you well, did so come on over yeah here. and then let's look and at like it like this i'm saying is they not gonna take that chance with a top balls well, well, well just look at it like this even even the year that we had yeah. last year was horrible right <laughs> We didn't get a chance to see any implementations due to OTAs or training camp. And True. I know that there's other teams that can ha True. have the same sentiments, but I don't think that the other teams tried to install a whole new scheme. True. So one thing that I can say That's about fair. Quinn this year is that I believe that they're going to have OTAs. I believe yeah. that they're going to have the training camps. And Dan Quinn, he's going to get on the level and he's going to speak to the players. Hopefully – we're going to reach into the free agency and yep. get one or two guys and implement his style and his scheme. And I guess less than 10 days from now, all three of us or all four of us, we're going to be looking at the senior bowl line by line, seeing who will fit the four, three, who's going to be on the defensive side. We're going to go each. We're going to look at each of those guys that's out there, hoping that the Cowboys pick up those guys and maybe just maybe we'll have a better performance than what we had last year. I believe so. We will. Now, I think that's a real good thought, too, because when we was having a debate on who was a potential better candidate, that can kind of make it seem as if there's no hope for Quinn. No, there's hope for Quinn. It's not a hope. And I say the hope also in your point and spinning it to a positive law that I also see is the fact that we simply find it back to a 4-3. We're not going to have people doing this hybrid stuff. And I think that's going to make our guys just faster, just yeah. period. I think it's going to cause our edge rushers to be the single point of the defense again. That That's the fundamentals of a 4-3 defense. It's, it's built off the edges and the talent of the edges. I think tanking the hand in the ground and going upfield and working his counters is going to make a lot more plays. Um, so <clears throat> if we can just patch up the small holes that we have on defense. I think you're right. I think it puts us mid defense. That's all we need. Yeah, yeah. I, I say we might want more than that, but you don't, we agree. You, you don't need to be a, some elite defense. This defense needs to get back to, to the very least the middle of the pack and being opportunistic with turnovers. That's yeah, I think that'll thing. get us get in the playoffs, but I think that'll get us in the playoffs. Um, I think we're going to need some ballers. To I, really I was just about to say, that's the, number, that's the number one boss we need. Yeah. Ballers. ballers we need ballers yeah. and, and and so like i didn't i didn't i didn't want to come across as the debbie downer i was honestly analyzing why so damn fast like literally like it's it's you could have looked at a lot more candidates even if you waited right because your better candidates which i call the the better seats not the cheap seats the 50 yard line seats in the playoffs right now you know those guys it's also you could have looked at after the season was I'm officially curious. over. Curious I got a theory on that, but we'll go I'm ahead. I'm curious uh, if your candidates but, had more defensive coordinator experience than Quinn. Because I think something that's working against Dan Quinn is that he was only the defensive coordinator in uh, in Seattle, where a lot right. of these guys were defensive coordinators at multiple different places, be right. before or after they were head coaches. So I'm wondering if that's kind of being held against him, and, and that's all, and, and you know what it is, what it is. He wasn't a D.C. anywhere else, so... He only has one defensive coordinator part of his resume on his resume. Uh, right. So I, you know, and that's probably. Remember him as. I, I just ain't trying to hate, but when you think of Dan Quinn, you think of that Legion of Boom. But like I said, I feel like 
he wasn't the sole guy. Gus Bradley was an architect in that defense. Oh, for sure. And I'm not hating on Quinn, but when I see it's almost like he got hyped up with it. Not saying he ain't put no work in there. I ain't saying that, but it's almost like he got hyped in because Gus Bradley planted seeds in that too. And Quinn left for a little bit and Gus Bradley was still there doing it. You feel me? And then no, Quinn no. came back. Oh, I, see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when he came back and then he reaped the benefits of that, that fruition of the defense growing even more. Now you eating off the labor. And just like you said, Sky, then you go off all of a sudden because you're the hot so, guy and then you become a, a coach at Atlanta. So how do you we explain me? Gus Bradley then? Gus Bradley ate off the Legion of Boom, got a head coach because of it, did nothing in Jacksonville, was not a good team, was not a good defense until they brought in Doug Marone. And, and had all those bad picks, and they finally hit, or all those top picks, and they finally hit. Then went to uh, the Chargers as a defensive coordinator, implemented his scheme, got took some, you know, got it together. Now they have a respectable defense. Gus Bradley basically kind of in the same boat as Dan Quinn. Eight, all, and listen, there's no doubt about it. Dan it's Quinn became a head. Co- Dan Quinn became a head coach because of the defense in Seattle. Let's just be real. Yeah. Gus Bradley became a head coach because of the defense in Seattle. Both of these guys, when they became head coaches, their defense were not Seattle. Yeah, and, and let's be real. It's hard to recreate yeah. an Earl Thomas, a Richard exactly. Sherman, Cam Chancellor, yeah. Ronnie right. Bain, and all of those boys, and, and Cliff right. Averill. And so it's hard to recreate as, those guys. And so then the Quinn didn't. Philosophy. Gus did. Yeah, Gus, well. He drafted him. He drafted him. So that, that's a hard thing Gus to do. Gus did where? Oh, you mean in Seattle, in Seattle. In, in Seattle. It's just hard to recreate it. But my theory is, is that Dan, while him being on the market, the Cowboys looking at it like, what was our issue? What was our fault last season? Well, we didn't have enough time. Well, damn it, this year, we're not going to have that excuse. We're going to bring in somebody earlier so they can evaluate the the current roster that we have now and then so they can facilitate some philosophies during the free agency so they can get their butt out here and do their homework for the draft. And we're not going to wait three to four weeks because – Oh, the NFL is a week to week business. Law, do you still feel like they went the safe side on this hire? I, I feel like, you know, with the with the thing is with Dan Quinn, they went with a philosophy of the 4 3. Yes, yeah. it was safer than bringing yeah. in a new philosophy. I think it needed to go Opposed back to, to bringing in somebody that they don't know. So the 4 3 is, is a safer deal. That was, yeah. that was most of the players were crying I call, about I call saying the that they are a 4 3 smart. Say again? Yeah, I would use the smart. word smart. It is smart. It's smart. It's smart. But as I said, man, like I said, you know, I ain't trying to I ain't trying to be the hater of the bunch. You know, I said, but I told y'all before, before they hired Dan Quinn, didn't I tell y'all I was like, I don't want no Dan Quinn. I said that. Yeah, I, I said, didn't, I didn't I, want him. I, you I said you didn't want him nor Wade Phillips, right? I did both of them. I didn't want them. And it wasn't that I didn't think Wade was a dog. I just feel like it reincarnating that with Dallas after all them years you've been here. I just feel like it wasn't going to reincarnate. And when I seen Dan Quinn, I don't even feel like the Atlanta thing influenced me. I just feel like you haven't had a dope track record as a defensive coordinator, like you said, Sky. And you you popped off off that that thing because remember Chris Richard was the hot guy too remember everybody was talking about him being a head coach until we got our ass kicked in that playoffs with the Rams and all of a sudden when nobody talking about Chris Richard being and that wasn't even his fault that wasn't his fault I I think Chris Richard is a victim of the Cowboys yep I know he was still a hot guy of being a head coach until that debacle you feel me I don't even think it was that I think it was being in Dallas dog I I think there's some blacklisting going on with Chris Richard but that could be a whole nother show I I, I think Chris Richard is not some idiot I don't understand why this man no me neither so that you know what we'll we'll, we'll go there yeah that's another mystery he need to be coaching but nonetheless he need to be coaching. I I think that would have been the best thing to do is to just just my thing is I knew they were gonna when when Dan Quinn got mentioned this is what I felt in my heart I said I didn't want that and as soon as his name came up I just honestly felt in my heart I was like watch Dallas gonna get him I just felt that instantly like Dallas is gonna get him because it's Dan Quinn Legion of Boom they're looking at Legion I just felt it and then when I seen when they said Dan Quinn when they brought him in I said yeah they they ain't mess with nobody come on he the leading candidate like James. it's a bunch of candidates <laughs> right now. Put it like this before before balls go. Would you be happier with my option? Remember, I was saying keep Mike Nolan. <laughs> Come on, James. I got you now. You got I, I said I put a smile on your face. <laughs> Would you be happy with Mike <laughs> Nolan? <laughs> no, nah, I mean, and that's an excellent point though, man. That's that's going back to the we, we I got you. We gonna play better because we're in the four three. Yeah, I mean you gotta look but, at that. But at part the of same it. time. 
it's and your point is valid, Law, because we really right. did lose time. Like COVID killed killed two weeks. Like when you have a new coach in um the voluntary workouts, you get two extra weeks mm -hmm. to report. That was taken because of COVID. You right on that. Now, like we can't take away from that affecting our defense. That's a fair counter. At I, the same time, man. Boss, I think I think what else we have to realize here um, is that we can't continue to have all these different philosophies. This is going to be three different wow. chiefs in three years defensively. How can you build a culture? How can you build a process, right? That word. How can you build if you're I would constantly say first, switching the Chiefs and the schemes? You can't keep doing that because on, on the three, four, this Mike Nolan scheme, thank goodness they didn't go all the way in on it. it, it and it fell on his face. And then we bring in a 4-3 guy with four with three, four players because you, you can't keep doing that. So I think if, if we can remove, and I think us as content creators need to try to push this to the fans. I know the I know we want to say the the uh, a legion of boom legion of boom. Let's take out the legion of boom, and let's look at it for what it is: a four three coach that has a plan of what the yeah. type of players he want. Can you tell me, boss, what the hell type of player did Mike Nolan want? What the hell type of plan was Mike Nolan? What the hell type of defense was that? Yeah, we I would say, man, know. to your point, the first thing they got to stop doing is stop lying to us. That's the first thing because they oh, came they out last year and told us <laughs> last year that we are all four three and we're gonna have occasionally some three four principles. They it was lied. The other man. way. It was the, it other, was the way. other way. And then December twelfth is when Jerry came out with Steven saying, "Damn, my bad." That was the biggest That's regret. Dope. So you gave us twelve weeks of lies to finally say we messed up. Mm. so it's like stop selling the fans shut up stuff like if you go build three four say you go build three four so if so that we could critique you because see what i was saying in the off season and i was saying this with big when we was doing shows i say man i keep hearing this three four stuff we don't have the linebackers i kept saying that bro like we got the personnel we didn't have the personnel so i was like right. it can't be what they telling us it was but it manifested during the season so like we can't even as podcasters tell the truth if we being lied to. Cause what mm -hmm. they saying there is real four three, real four three. Well, I mean, based on how you did us last year, are you? Right? So it's like, I think this time really they're four three. Yeah. But at, yeah. but but I'm saying though, it's it's I'm starting to have a bad stench, bro. And the stench is I'm seeing bad defense follow McCarthy, man. Because when I looked at mm -hmm. Green Bay, because I also, what I do, I study also the competitor, right? So I, I look at Green Bay. I say, okay, what happened after Green Bay that turned Green Bay? They made two major free agent acquisitions and one in the back at with Savage. They made four. Who was the fourth? Preston, the Smith brothers. The Smith brothers. Kirksey. Kirksey, Adrian okay. Amos. That's okay, four. That's, that's who a I high left off. percentage that's who I left off. of really good players that they weren't bringing in during. McC but but go ahead. I, that's I, my point. That's what I'm saying. It's a breakdown with him. It wasn't. Whereas, but, but, but it's not it, that. So the the free agency switch had nothing to do with him. That was Ted Thompson, and he talked about how him and Ted Thompson butt heads because they would not let he would not let go out and get free agents. McCarthy spoke gotcha. on so this. So they finally, you saying that they finally came around to getting free agents after he left, and it was too late. They, 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 what they that did does was, happen. What they did was they fired Ted Thompson for being the general manager, and it happened to <laughs> coincide with Mike McCarthy leaving. Gotcha, they brought gotcha, in a gotcha. new general manager. What happened so, the first so year? So, you oh, give me a little bit to that point. What was it? Don Capers, just a bad defensive coordinator. I would die. They got Thank rid you. of Don Capers. Ask, they bring in the other guy. He was good there early, like kind of like Wade Phillips is. When when Don Capers first comes in, if y'all watch Don Capers, when he first comes in the building, his first few years, he's dynamic. They be doing all kind of turnovers, creating, but then it gets stale yeah, and people ball. start catching on to his style, and then you can beat it. Let but me the ask first you, James. Year, would you put yeah. that on Don, or would you put the, what, what Boss is saying? He's saying bad defenses are following him. I mean, let's be real. McCarthy's only been to two places now. But, mm -hmm. but, but yeah. would you put that on Capers? Would you put that on front office? Would you put that on Mike? Would you put that in a mixture? 
Because it sounds like uh-huh. boss, you're putting it on Mike. When I personally think it was a combination of all three. When really, yeah, he's probably, at the, it, it's probably at the bottom of the It's probably at the bottom of the totem pole. It's like, been, go ahead. I just feel like Mark McCarthy went with capers, and then you know when they got the Super Bowl and they was balling out. It's like okay, it's easy. I don't got to look for nobody else. You know what I'm saying? Just stay here. And then it's like you see how long he kept capers, even when capers defense is like you catch on right. the capers. He reminded me of Dick LeBeau. Like the, they, the Steelers yeah. kept Dick LeBeau for so long till to got funny like capers, and they said, "All right, Keith Butler, step on up." But you feel me? It's like capers. It's like McCarthy. You've seen capers D after a few years. People catch on to it, but you still keep on trying to keep him. Right. I don't know. Same. Oh. No, 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 no. You on to something like with I'm Mike Nolan. Saying, bro, Mike, no, Mike Nolan is the exact same example. Bro. Ain't never, it's it's not nothing not the same Yeah, no. it's like so. It's like it's so. At some example. point, you lobby for this guy. He comes in and epically fails. He produces a defense that's literally worse in our franchise history, and he's not a mid-season fire. That should And you, <laughs> right? He should have been a mid-season fire, which literally means you was likely lobbying to keep his ass around. Let's be like, honest. The only reason time. Mike Nolan, because our front office showed that they will, they will fire you mid-season. And doubt, like man, we we did it the the, the year before. So we like so Mike Nolan likely lobbied for this guy. Also knew he was coming in with that three four garbage, but lobbied us like we was a four three, and said it in the public because our fans are smart. We got the smartest fan base, I guarantee you, because all of us was scratching our head in the fan base on this. This is a three four coach, and we a four three defense, and we ain't gonna be able to be to build that likely in one year the resources it would take to do that, especially be a contender that we was chirping about it. So they was like, we're a four three. They came out with that. It was a lie, but who lobby for this guy? So, I mean, yeah, he did himself just, no favors by, by, by the Mike Nolan thing. He, he can't, you don't get a pass McCarthy. Because, so I'm because like, of McCarthy, Mike Nolan. show me, show me some good defense at some point, bro. Like, cause this bad defense. And then I'm talking to green Bay people. Like I'm doing my scouting. Cause I go to the people like, you know how it is. If people really want to know about Jason Garrett, come talk to me, come talk to you. Come talk to the law. Oh, it Come was, it to, was, you see it what I'm saying? absolutely time for so McCarthy to go. I'm talking to Green Bay people, and I'm like, okay, okay, listen. We 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 over here, we we like Mike McCarthy, but what, what, what was really going on? And I'm just getting the intel from them. And they like, hey, man, and I'm researching it. And they like, bro, it's the defense. That's what we got rid of. That, that's not why they got and rid of him. And it looked true. That is not why they got rid of him, boss. But it's been years of it. Like, I know he said he'd been fighting back and forth and that. And then we boss. know we can't trust boss. him because he came it, out it boss. It Aaron Rodgers or Mike Aaron McCarthy? What like, are you picking? Like, Aaron Rodgers didn't like Mike Thank McCarthy you. no more. Thank you. The defense ain't have jack to do with it. It was yeah. Aaron Rodgers like uh-huh. or Mike McCarthy. Once Aaron Rodgers don't like you no more. Bye. Because if Aaron just Rogers like is he only lost what six or seven games since Mike McCarthy. That, that's left. the thing. No, he's in the championship McCarthy game two years in a row without McCarthy. As if I'm sorry, I, and I'm not trying to be McCarthy uh, optimist or what have you, but my goodness, it's it's hard to hear sometimes. You would think he is is freaking Steve Spagnuolo at head coach. You don't go to six championship games, win the Super Bowl, and you're some badass coach. Mike McCarthy essentially was Andy Reid. No, he good with the coach. Super Bowl. No, he's a good. It was Andy Reid in Philly with the Super Bowl, and then by the end of his tenure, it just was time to go. Well, I need to show me, man. Serious, I'm sick of it. Like, I show me then, because what you put out with Mike Nolan and you lobbied for him, obviously. Well, I ain't gonna say obviously, but it it looks like for sure because that had, dude should have been. To. And then you had a decent D coordinator that's sitting in the building that coached a 4-3 that don't get touched. Did, 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 see, that shit, this is what I don't understand about the offseason last year. It was, and even the draft, if you want to be Why real. didn't we touch Gus, man? I, I, well, Gus was already. We, that's what I'm saying. Like, why under. don't you say, listen, man, you can't get no worse than this BS, right? We was worse than Frank Contrast history. Come on, man. Let's salvage what we got. Let's salvage it. No, we didn't. We stuck with Mike. Why did we bring Who was Mike's boy? Oh, yeah, we, Mike all, we also asked this that we don't like. It seems like we don't, as the staff, we don't like people going back and forth. Everybody got to get along and be best buddies and all that shit. That's not the way it happens. Sometimes you got to have somebody. It's okay to you to hire somebody that say, you ain't my best friend. Because guess what? 
if you're my best friend, I might, you might slack on that now. Oh, I might not tell you this today because yeah. I feel like you're my friend. You should see that. But if you ain't my friend, you better make sure you're getting that dude on defense. All right. Yeah. Hey, you better shut the hell up and coast. The, oh, I got this. Like, hey, definitely. But that that's what makes great teams. But you know what's crazy you saying about that, James? Bucky Brooks said that's what Quinn is. Quinn is that. I forget the term he used. He's the guy that oh, if Mike McCarthy's not going to be the dude that's, that, that has that that voice, Quinn's going to tell him, going to tell him, hey, now listen, this is how we're doing it. I don't care. And Quinn and Mike McCarthy, not friends. And I'm not saying he's going to say it to McCarthy, but he'll say it to his players or say it to his coaches or what have you. But can you imagine? I mean, I'm just, just speculating here. Somebody having a disagreement with Nolan or coming to Mike with about Nolan. But guess what? That's my dog. You know, I understand that's my guy. You on to it. You, 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 you starting to say it. You, you, you know starting to say it. You starting to say it yourself. And also, I will say that if he was a head coach and a defensive coordinator. It may have more pull when you're getting on your players too, because you was a head coach too. That's another thing that he said. He brought that up. Like I was a head coach, so I know how to. Well, Nolan Deal was too, it, yeah. but 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 yeah. Nolan was. I just think he was. Nolan was wackish. Strange hire. That was a strange even, hire. It's soft in San Francisco. Remember and when he it was, was strange to keep he him? In San Francisco, wasn't he soft as hell? He was and uh, so strange to keep him. I thought it was, it was strange. strange. Find out in the future. He was soft. I thought it was strange to bring in George Edwards too, because I'm like, what? George Edwards has been four three forever. And we're bringing in Mike Nolan, who's been three four, and you're talking about this three four high. This was it was just a weird off season. Then I'm like, okay, that's why I'm trusting. Let me find. But well, this I actually trust more than the shit they did last year because you got people that are cohesive. Dan Quinn I don't know is, if they cohesive, man. I'm literally. not buying it. Now I'm on. I'm well, truly well, how on was, how was the coaches who coach with Dan Quinn? Those coaches did not coach with the defensive coordinator. <laughs> like you know what I'm saying? These coaches were with Dan Quinn. So I'm not message, liking the smell of your defensive tackle coach or your defensive line coach having only one year professional coaching. Well, well, Let me no, tell you Scott, something. I like Scott to smell better if they that, get better players. Skyra said that Quinn is going to be pretty much calling the, the, the defensive line front, you know. It's just that they got to have that position filled. Well, see, I'm quite but sure but that no, no, no. that still will be the position. Yeah, coach, but right? that's like this is the feeling I had with when Kelly Moore was hired to be the quarterback coach for Dak. I thought it was the stupidest thing in the world. Because, see, when you – it's difference between knowing X's and O's and knowing how to be a teacher. It's a big difference, man. Like, because you have to actually teach these guys technique. You got to build stuff sometimes into their game. And when you put a first-timer into something that we got demolished on – I just don't feel good about that. I feel and bad. Quinn I feel real bad about that. And then, even though he's going to be calling the front, I, how it works is you are learning from your individual coach in that room. So Quinn is not, he's not going to go down to the D line and start coaching them. Yeah, He'll Leon call Lester the front. Have that role. You see what I'm saying? So you still dealing with almost a degree of this guy better be a natural. And sometimes, there is the case. I do I know that there's a case to where you the young up a coming stud and you call at what you do. I just hope it was really identified and not none of that good old boy stuff that Dallas can do. We like him. We believe in him. I mean, this guy's he was an ex-British who came through an exchange program to get an inroads to become a coach. That's not the normal track of how you get an NFL job. You usually got to pay your dues. You're not in some program that that opens up doors for you to coach, and then you end up being a linebacker coach, and then we're going to give you a chance to be the D. Man, no, not how we bled. We bled ugly from the D-line last year. That's where we want to put a rookie green-ass coach? I'm not buying it. And well, it's like we had it's one so of the best far, defensive so line bad. coaches last year, boss. And what the hell did that defensive line do? You said with who? Jim Tom Sula. Yeah, that was a veteran. That's what I'm saying. It's <laughs> and what did he worse. do with the D line? Yeah, I mean, even worse. That's what I'm saying. So you had so, that so, type of performance with a veteran. You want something that's going to be even better with a rookie? Listen, I'm man, not buying it. I'm not excited the, about that, that. Forget that. Bring me That's the important. Jimmy's. No, the Jimmy's and Joe's are more important. No, the Jimmy's and Joe's are more important. I agree. 
but just as important is the scheme you put around them too, and sure. the guy that's gonna motivate the them guys, and them guys that's gonna get them boys' technique see, up. See, see, they see. really should have got my boy Tuck out of Dallas in there. I would have felt better by him. See, got the experience, had an all-time bad rush defense. Now we go with a guy who doesn't have that much experience, and we're still complaining. What we really should be complaining about is we don't I'm have the Jimmys and Joes. I, it's not even complaining. It's, it's like, and I should be complaining. Like you should too. Like, look how we we got lied to. I'll we complain. got told we, and then I'm gonna come into this off season like, oh yeah, we getting it right now. When I'm oh, looking at a, a coach, do that. we don't know. We if getting one it right. year of experience. It's way too early for that. But you know what? I'm, I'm not. Gonna I just see. can't get excited for that. I'm sorry. I'm gonna say. I, I, I'm gonna wait till we see what happens in regards to free agency and the draft. And then, okay, if you're gonna give him Eli a nuke and Don Terry Poe, who, who don't care, and and, and no Tristan Hill because he got hurt, and uh, no McCoy because he got hurt, and I, and I'm gonna say, hey, you you rookie coach, coach him up. Oof, yeah, I'm gonna be a little nervous, boss. But if you go I'm out there and get me some, hell. if you go out there and get me some dogs, I feel a little better about it. But it's still wait and see. I would too, and but I, I still because to me, I'm being all the way honest, bro. I'm just being raw honest, man. We we greatly messed up getting rid of the hot boys and everything, bro. Oh God. That, no, I mean that. No, yeah. listen to me, bro. No, listen to me, bro. No, hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. I know. I know. You don't believe in the hot boys. No, I don't. In the name. But I do, and I'm gonna tell you why. Because it was a self-led group, and that's what you want on your team. You want an I, identity. I, you yeah, want I like the identity, but that, you fell off after one year. Yeah, yeah. yeah the the no, play. No, 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 and it wasn't that. after no one year. No, they yeah, gave well, about two, three good years, man. But my point is, years, my point Martin, is, what? as soon as Mike came in, it was decimated, and no, they was holding it. No yeah, yeah. Well, I ain't heard nothing about no hot boys because it looked like it. Yeah, 2018, they was hot boy in it. 2019, they didn't do jack poo. That's why the hot boys went the hell away. So if you're going to say no. and call a name, no. If you're going to mm -hmm. sit there and call a name, hot boys, and you're going to live up to that rep, yeah, you got to do it going. every year. You can't start marketing and making T-shirts and, and having carrying cases and pack bags and all that dumb shit. <laughs> nah, and then you I'm ain't with all of that. that. Hey, that was their that, uh, identity. Hot boys ain't do shit. Oh my goodness, it ain't about what they did. Boys, man. Totally, all the way. Do nothing. They still fell rock it. For one year. Yeah, boys. but it's hey, but it's not God that created the, the hot boys with Taco. Identity. It was shit. it was a self made identity. So the good thing about having something like that, to even if it wasn't up to the standards, they was trying to lead each other. That's what I like. What's gonna happen now with no identity with this new ass coach? I want them to be the Cowboys. That's all I want them to be. If they can be the Cowboys front four and this new coach, Dan Quinn, I don't care who else, whoever else, Dan Quinn is going to be judged by this front four and what this defense is going to do. That's why we brought him in. So if he got a sidekick named Aiden from London or England, wherever he may be Tell from, me, mate. that's cool. But long as he implement his Does system an and coaches, coach, coaches, yeah. then we okay. Now, he might my thing is, if he, can establish, if he can establish the Cowboys instead of the Hot Boys, they'll be cool if he nah, go out there and get I, the pieces that he I like those names, wants. man. Those names are identities. Oh, it, don't even, it don't even oh. necessarily got to be the Hot Boys. It could be a different I don't care, but it's something about when you get in a group to buy into something that's... Was, uh, uh, you listen to other Law, I mean, uh, I, I just want to know... You, you other names of these teams that they're getting made was was the Seattle going out there making all kind of uh carrying cases of the Legion of Boom? I don't know. Let me go over there in Seattle and let me make sure and let me see if they was marketing like that because we went nuts though with the gear. Everything the is marketing in Dallas market. though. Exactly. And guess what? They went to more of the marketing until really repping that name on that field. And guess what? It got decimated That's, that way. Not no Mike Nolan didn't come in and take Marcus. it away. You took it away yourselves because you didn't play the same type of defense and the same type of mentality because you didn't lose your coach in 2019. You had the same damn coach, but y'all weren't playing hot boy like. So I don't want to hear the shit when you don't want to do it every day. I mean, I mean, we just diff on that. And I'm going to just tell you, I honestly wholeheartedly believe in having an identity and having it to where you got guys that lead themselves. Like, for instance, well, when they didn't do it the next year. Yeah, they didn't do it the next year, but they don't shit on the other years in which they did do they it. Had they, 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 they had, and they had a standard to it. And the standards, the standards of it 
was making plays. And that's what I liked about it. Because when I talked to Tank about it, he said, you don't get into the hot boys club until you at least get a sack. Oh, so, man. and it was standards to it. Now, oh, now did they live up to it? That's not what I'm debating. We debate on, on, that's not the debate. The debate is having an identity, having something to say, okay, man, we ride together. Can I ask you a question? I don't feel good about them not having an identity and but a that, new coach. That's why you bring in with the a coach. rookie year coach. Oh, that, if you start, if you start I, shutting people down, that's going to bring your own identity. I get what you're saying about having an identity with the Hot Boys. I get that. I felt that. I was feeling like that they bonded. But I still together. didn't get what is their identity. You keep saying the word identity. What was the Hot Boys identity? Yeah, what was it? Stop yeah, the run. Yeah, I mean, uh, wasn't stopping yeah, the run. No. Wasn't even, wasn't getting turnovers. Wasn't wasn't sacking yeah, the quarterback. What they, was their the identity identity? Was their uh, they had a standard for it, and they would say you had to get a certain amount of plays. I I don't know the exact oh, breakdown man. of it, but Tank actually talked about it because I saw him actually he say, "Lee, you didn't qualify." So yeah, yeah I should I have, but at the same time, like it's not, not your point. And father and all that. That good but stuff. like, it's like cool. I'm for, I'm all the way for it. I'm all the way for what it. If, I want them to bring it back. Or what if they? So, so you're saying like a self-made identity? Yes, I want a self-made identity, especially with a new coach. With no a coach that self-made, giving, uh, giving your own self a nickname. No, I mean, no, like you right. Y'all gotta make plays. You gotta make plays to earn it. But like, it's 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 a lot of stuff that's about football as we even saw today with tyler that's about motivation like goals it's it's oh. sometimes even go down and like small so, stuff like that oh, like can I ask you a question can i ask you a question when they when dallas had the doomsday defense and there was the steel curtain and all that did they name the did, did the pittsburgh steelers name the, themselves the steel curtain or did the fans i don't know who named them and the fans did Okay. I don't know. They had Dan Doomsday defense. It was the people. They was like, man, this defense is so nasty. We're naming it this. That's all I'm saying. I get what you're Not saying. You're self-made. But people were seeing it from afar. Like, your defense is so nasty. Let's we go. need you this. We, because y'all this nasty. And those, I get you identifying thanks. yourself with hot boys, but. What about what? this? Because it can have a negative effect too, boss, as you know. And I know this is y'all guy over there on, on the book. I understand this is your guy. Jalen Smith, but it, you can be real. My man's brand starting to overcome his play, in my opinion. The whole celebrating when you're down 30, the whole swiping when you make a tackle uh, after not having a terrible game or you're down 17 with two minutes. Left. The brand was becoming bigger, and that's that makes me nervous. The hot yeah. boy brand was becoming bigger than the play. We got so immersed with hot boy, hot boy, but when you actually – Look at the play. They weren't getting, they weren't elite in sacking. They weren't elite in causing turnovers. They weren't elite in stopping a run. They weren't really elite in anything to give yourself a name. I get having a self -ident self made identity, but maybe there's a different way to lead. And maybe that's what needs to happen. We need to get somebody else in here. And I think it was going to be McCoy that can show you there is a different way to be a leader on this defensive line than having a hot boy brand mentality. I'm with that. I'm with that. But I'm going to say this too. And this is what I said about Mike McCarthy looking like he might have some kryptonite to come to defense because McCoy and Poe both came from Carolina. They both was ranked bottom on the defense to stop in the run. So that's almost like cheap seats again. It's like stop picking names. And well, how pick was, you think that was McCarthy picking them or was that the Joneses? Well, I'm just saying yeah. under McCarthy, McCarthy I'm just saying under McCarthy, the pattern that I'm seeing is names without resumes. That's what I I'm starting to see. I can give you another. I can give you another. When he had Clay Matthews, I can give you a pattern of other dudes, too. There's one dog over there, boss. I'm sorry, dog. Yeah, yeah, that's early. I'm talking about early, but then, like, I mean, like, I'm not going to go pick his best year. I'm going to look at his most recent history. saying, though, he had dogs on defense. He did have dogs at a point, but I'm just saying, like, I'm not going to co-sign McCoy and Poe. When their track that record the year help. before was that close was to dead help. last or dead help. last. Nah, That's see, I, I just totally disagree. McCoy and Poe individually were not bad players. The, the Carolina defense collectively was bad. There's a they difference. Was bad at Demarcus the Lawrence is not a bad player. The Dallas Cowboys defense collectively is bad at stopping the run. Demarcus you Lawrence in the middle, is not. Okay, did that, did that middle get better or worse when he left? I don't know what their defense is. 
No, I'm talking about Poe. When Poe left. Oh, no, 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 no. Time out, time out, time out, time out. 2020 Poe was awful. 2019 take Poe. Boss, you know this goddamn well. Go watch 2019 take Poe. Poe was good. Go watch No, no, I did. And matter of fact, I said then that Woods, our Woods was a better player. I said it last year. Because he yeah, was. You did. I do remember saying that. But yeah. Coy, again, 2019 take he stopped was, the not, run better. was not bad. I still think, here's, and that's bad, in my opinion, when Woods is your best defensive tackle. Yeah. Sure, but, right. <laughs> right. I mean, he's thing. a, and see, he's somebody else that need new training. I'm being all the way honest with him. He need to call Tuck. He need to call Tuck. We got, we got good guys right out of here at DFW. Actually, I would say we got the best in DFW. Coach Tuck, he been on y'all show. Let me like, give you another pattern room with McCarthy. Can we also say that, once again, it's a lot of glitz and glamour in Dallas. Maybe you oh, don't get the yeah. Tuck who, listen, right. Tuck, don't, Tuck don't be on camera. Right. Tuck don't mm -hmm. talk about stuff. Tuck just does that work. Mm -mm. The guy, who's the guy that, and I'm not hating, but when you see the guy they work with, he's everywhere. He's on camera. He's on this. He's on that. And guess what? I'm not hating, but sometimes players put out videos just like when a player wants to look like he's good in the community what does he do he has a video and he goes out there passing out good chickens okay? point, and yeah. he shows hey i'm passing out chickens you see i'm good in the community hey he good in the community he passed out chicken stalls can be in the community so you see the players that are working maybe they don't go with a tub because it ain't glimmer and glads but when we see him Man, with the other guy, it's all on TV. And what we what are the plant what do the fans look and say, damn, he working. He getting his work on, dog. But he may I'm Yeah. Just, and that's why I like Tuck and I like Ronnie Braxton, because they don't do heavy social media marketing. They stuff is word of mouth by reputation. That's how they grow. And then you want those types to be in your building because they're entrepreneurs with it too. That makes a big difference. See, when you think about it. When you're an entrepreneur trainer, you also got to be very concerned on liability, right? Uh, you got to be concerned with injuries. So they, it's almost like asking somebody that can juggle 12 balls if they have balance. Of course they do. When you have to juggle all these different athletes and then turn them back over to the pro teams as better players, or you would not get another dollar that person is going to do a whole better job than somebody that has even likely the facilities. You look at what he said that Ronnie Braxton had to do to even train him. He had to go partner with 13 North Texas facilities to be ready to schedule all these pro athletes at the drop of a dime. That is some major juggling to just give boys exponential training so yeah i mean yeah we do need to get out of those guys that's hype and get out of the guys that got real results like tuck real truth that's the truth let me let like me, let me ask you about the pattern because you talk about the pattern and this i also noticed the pattern last year when mm -hmm. uh, when i was studying mike mccarthy and specifically on defense yeah um how do you explain then eight of his 13 seasons in in in, in uh oh, honestly, Oakland, in green bay their defenses were ranked in the top 10 in interception percentage. And eight different times they were ranked in the top 10 in, in interceptions total and four times in the top five. So that's another pattern I can give you as well. I don't even that's know if good. that's all Mike McCarthy, but nonetheless, no, we can good. make these numbers jump. No, you can't make numbers jump because that was actually a reach. Because what you did is you said defense and then jumped to interceptions on the secondary. So that means you need to be looking at the secondary. No, 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 no. no. I, that's defense. what I'm talking about. The I mean, if you oh, jump oh, to the done. secondary. I'm not okay, done. No. Guess oh, who I was the secondary was. coach there? Joe Witt. Witt coach Witt, yeah. And I, and I told you earlier, I didn't judge Witt like I judged um, – Quinn because Witt has a solid resume career-wise when you look at the people that they brought in and they made into ballers. I did not judge Witt off that bad Atlanta season because he walked into a rookie and he walked out with one of his best cornerbacks gone. True fun. So it's well, like, no, that's not the same type of talent level. So I'm not talking about one good year and in, 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 or I'm talking about I looked at these guys' careers I tried as much as possible to look at the talent they was working with to make my judgment to say who I think is real or not. So and the, I so gave were you with, fair? Were you fair with Quinn when he went through a history? I mean, his defenses suffered massive injuries for a year and a half. 
massive. Did you go in and say, you know what? I'm a, all right, I'm gonna give him a, 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 a not question mark on that season because he lost Neil, he lost Deion Jones, he lost Campbell, he lo- he lost big time players on his defense. Yeah, I did. Okay. I did. I really did. Now you're I, talking like about- I said, because I said in his six or seven years with Atlanta, he had a top 10 defense once. OK, so I gave him credit for that and I gave him credit for those injuries because that's not fair to count that against him. But we also dealing with a long track record now to where now if the Atlanta comeback was just an anomaly, then I'd be like, OK, well, you know, you can't judge that. But when you become known for it and you are considered a defensive coach, head coach or not, the buck stops with you as the head coach, especially when that's supposed to be your specialty. So I'm not go. I'm not over here just drinking the Kool Aid on Quinn. I'm super on wait and see, and I'm on more so. This looks bad so far on hey, paper. Hey, but there have I, been I, I times that right we here, there have I been times that we overperform paper too. 2014, I, I all, we overperformed paper. On paper, we was average. On 2014, let me put it all on one bow tie right here, uh, uh, balls and sky. Yeah. yeah. Although Quinn got all of the records for the most epic, you know, losing the big time leagues and stuff like that. Yeah. We Jeez. got on the other end, Mike McCarthy is known for with all of the comebacks, right? So that counts for <laughs> all, all, all of that. And you just lamented the fact that you like the Joe Witt uh, hiring. Yeah, I like that. As, as it being that he is a great philosophy as it relates to t- training and educating he Christian and Charles developing 2.0. the secondary. That's one of the areas that we needed help at for many of years, right? Yep. So we got that. Now, Quinn, he is a good philosopher and teacher as it relates to the defensive front or the front seven. So now we got that. So all we need now is time. And I believe that Jerry Wayne Jones and Stephen Jones and everybody, they looked at the same situation and they said, okay, let's go ahead and bring him in. Let him develop his philosophy and scheme. Let him go out there and get his dog. Let him implement his system. We're going to be looking at the uh, the senior bowl in a few days, and we're going to see how he's going to pull a guy from there. We're going to be looking at the free agency. They're going to also look at the people that they already got. And if the Cowboys do these moves, then I'm going to be like, ah, if they invest in, into the interior on their front, yeah. that's another move. And if they invest in the safety this year, that will be a whole nother move. And that Kool-Aid, big game James, Skywalker, oh, hey, boss, I'm going to buy me a, a, a damn oh. cowboy cup tall. And I'm going to have me some blue Kool-Aid. I'm going to pour it in the yeah. cup. And I'll be like, dog, I'm drinking this Kool-Aid because now I'm seeing that they're yeah. making the necessary investments into the interior and they made the necessary investment on the safety. I'm going to drink some Kool-Aid. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll say on, this, on the that. Let's put a bow on this. <laughs> i say this, Law, just keeping it 100 with you. It's going to have to take them making an investment into a talent, and I don't Absolutely. see them really doing that. Absolutely. Like, I think they need to actually overspend a free agent. No more bargaining, yep. no more marshals, no more. Like, you got to go ahead and get your guy, the DT, because don't trust no rookie to come in here and do it. We know the history on that. That generally don't work. Don't need uh, no rookie. You got your two young cats right yeah, now. Yeah, you got and your two young cats there right now. Yeah, a couple yeah. days on that, but you got yeah, your two young. Yeah, cats you got yeah, you got one going into year three, going one going into year, year two, two that played like he was already in year two. So, uh, no, we do got those guys, and that did happen with Taco versus Lawrence, where we was asking for a war dead, and the war dead was already in the building. That's a very very real scenario that could happen, where we ask for DT, and you're right, they could be sitting right here already, just ready to hit that year three year two mark where they usually hit. But at the same time, I still need more commitment from that yeah. DT position, because if we if we see what I'm thinking, we're going to see. I'm telling you what I think we go see. And safety. Yeah, I think we go see Xavier Woods. Oh. All right, and y'all know I don't want that. Don't bring that. We're gonna talk another hour about that. I don't. No, I'm that. just just telling you. <laughs> these are the signs that's gonna tell me it's a Kool Aid off season, and they trying to get us drunk on it. Xavier Woods come back. If we don't make a solid acquisition at DT, and if they try to just sell us that McCoy is that guy, I'm gonna say this is Kool Aid off season. Um, right. Because you gonna have to get a stud in here with that young coach. We we will know, boss, how much influence Dan Quinn has in free, free agency. Yeah, I don't free think it's going to be the draft us. yet. I think it's going to be free agency because there's two glaring holes. Defensive tackle, 
and safety. I don't think they're going to get both of them. I wish they would. But if you can get one of them, I'll say, okay, maybe Dan Quinn has something. Well, but we don't told believe... we're, getting, we're, getting, we're getting Keanu Neal. Yeah, we don't. We are still, we're getting him. Honestly, we we're getting Neil. Yeah, I would hope so. I'm about to say Neil makes sense. Him. But see, this is the deal, But that's man. not the dude I want. I, I want a free what... safety. But Neil yeah. makes sense, though. It's going to be Neil. But, but I not, pray but to God it's him. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't mind it. But nonetheless, what, I'm, what, I'm, what I wanted to get at was that we'll know what Dan Quinn would do. And let's hope that they carry the momentum because I'm gonna be real with y'all. There was a little bit of momentum last year in free agency because we would have never signed a Gerald McCoy, guys. We've been trying to get Gerald McCoy for years. We were trying to get him. We would have never signed the Everson Griffin. It didn't work out. It didn't work out. But maybe we take that to the next step. Now, don't go get your aging guys who were decent and maybe had a little bit left in the tank because when they when 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 Everson left, he still was decent. Now go get you a Dalvin Thomas, and dare I say, or or yeah. one of those one of those DTs that we like. Go get you a dare I say a Marcus May, one of those safeties that we like, not High Clinton Dix, even though they don't even sign the High Clinton Dix prior to last year. So hopefully, right, take that little shitty momentum that you had in regards to the guys you signed because you weren't doing that previously, and go to the next level. Go to the next level. Yeah, it's and so wait and see we- approach with that too. Yeah, well, and if we ain't doing that, then guess what? I'm just gonna be sitting here just like this. <laughs> we don't do that then. It's, it's, and then Quinn is going to yeah. be right where he was with Atlanta. Like, and we heard Tyler. Right and see, I'm we right. heard Tyler say today, earlier today, Dog. he said if they pay you, they play you. Man, he I'll, said I'll, it, bro. Unless you're we I'll always knew that, but I mean, I'm going to look at the, the free agency go tell me everything. I'm with you. That's my thing. That's why I said I got to wait. When people be like, what you going to do with the draft? Free agency is It ain't got nothing huge. to do with the draft. It's the free yeah, agency. It's we the already know what we're going to do in the draft. Yeah, we know what we're going to do. See if we see the same thing free agency, it's just going to be the same old shit. Yeah, bro. And see, what I'm not going to do and this year, gonna, I'm not going to let them up. hype me. I'm they're not, not going to let them. Yeah, yeah the I ain't going to let them do it, bro. Yeah, I'm not going to let them come in with the... We got Dan Quinn now, though. Oh, we got Quinn. He's playing good on the Quinn system. And Quinn. He's going to go back. Quinn can get this guy. Xavier Woods is different now. No, 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 He's He's coming around. Hey Here man, you, you know what? Let's stop because I'm gonna just start getting angry. So let's let's just not Cow- breaking news. Cowboys yeah. sign Adrian Claiborne, former Dan Quinn, seven sacks against the Cowboys. And the whole guy, oh, he gets seven sacks with the with the Cowboys. <laughs> exactly. No, I'm not buying it. Exactly. Not That's new, what they're gonna do. That's what they're gonna do, dog. Yeah. They're gonna get somebody that I already know what the fuck. Excuse me. What I'll be honest though, J- James. N- Neil, I would walk him and Neil. I'm cool yeah, with you. Too. I'll, yeah. walk I'll be like, those guy. <laughs> right. I don't I'm want you to with Neil, but I'm just saying that's what we, me and boss talked about this, that they are instantly, when they got Quinn, we knew Quinn was going to say, oh, I got Neil. But, and all the Cowboy fans will be like, oh, shit. We doing but, something. But, 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 it's an upgrade, though. But no, it is but that, upgrade, yeah, though. That's the, but see, that's, the next, that's Thompson. the next step I'm talking about, though. If you go get. True, a, a Neil, that is. That's the next step. That's a way above a high Clinton Dick signing at a position that we needed. Y'all got timid. You know what they did last year with it? I'm going to tip my toes in that's the That's what I'm the water, saying. They scary, though, y'all. Quick. That's what I keep trying to tell you. Y'all stay before, scary. But before, even you, but before you, they you, wasn't even, they was, they was like, I ain't getting I the No, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> they wasn't they <laughs> even putting their toe around the wall. The benefit of the doubt, the last two years, where we actually saw, even when you got Robert Quinn, you, they never was going to go out and get a Robert Quinn any other time. So, I'm, Randall Cobb, I'm giving them props the last two years. I'm seeing a little bit. But let me see you take your nuts and stick them all the way out and say, let's go. The chips are all Justin in. Simmons. F all y'all. We're trying to get a Super Bowl, so we're going to get this. If I don't see them nuts come out, I'm going to say, shut the F up, you lying. Yep. Basically, what he's saying, Dallas Cowboys will give me Justin Simmons. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> go get Dalvin Thompson. I don't go, even go want Justin Thompson. Simmons, man. I know, I know. I'm just look, playing. I'm just, I'm just, look, yeah. the Giants said, we want Thompson. I want the Cowboys to say, no, we want him. We want him over here. So we're going to outbid you. Know you. Make me so That's happy, y'all. I'm gonna, no, you serious. It's sad when we really just need a one tick. We, we just need, yo, dog. We just need a one tick. Stop playing. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag stop one playing. You got two young three techs, fam, that can rotate oh, with each other. Get and you got a backup one next tech to that can help you. Get the one tech. Get him. I take the but one they, tech but, over but the all, They gotta pay Dak. I need both. They gotta though. go pay Dak Prescott. That's, That's the main thing. Number one, give me DT. But number two, follow that up with a safety. Because boss, as you know this, you play DB. Yes. 
in this scheme, it is vital. You're going to be playing yeah. a lot of single high back there. You can't be playing single high back there with Xavier Man. Woods. You play single high back there with Xavier yeah. Woods, get ready to get toasted. And I looked up, I, I got 10 free agent safeties that's upgrades to us right now bro all right y'all i'm getting stupid all right man yeah let's wrap it up man <laughs> yeah let's go man let's no, go we'll i know we out, see we'll keep going dog gotta cut it off sorry for the harsh ending guys but we got to get going. i'm sorry Make it, <laughs> y'all, y'all, i'm sorry you could you could take my box out i'm sleeping <laughs> great show tonight man boss obviously as always come through we get the thing popping oh yeah man always uh, make sure you rock out with us, Boss Cowboys, Law Nation, Skywalker Steel, Big Game, James on all platforms. Make sure y'all hit them likes, subscribe, all that good stuff, man. We love y'all. Shout out to the mods. Peace.